Hey, Warpugs. So, we are here to watch a guy who says he doesn't know a lot about guns talk for another hour and a half about guns. I, like, when he said that the last couple of streams, I just sat there and was like, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Like, this guy knows more about guns than I will ever learn, okay? It is insane. Not to mention it's really funny to watch. So, Warpugs, it's Tuesday. How's everybody doing? Um, I'm hoping everybody's having a good week. I'm hoping everybody's had a good day so far. And if not, well, hopefully you just hopefully you're having some fun right now. You can just sit back, chill, stuff like that. Uh weird actually, um I I have some time to catch up. And uh Thank you, Weird. I do have some time to catch up. I actually, um, for my normal job, I'm a trainer. Now, one thing that happens um, is that it takes up a lot of time post everything. So I've I've been having trouble like staying caught up to everything, stuff like that. But I have time between I have between time between training groups right now. So I am going like. I, I got out of work about two hours early today. I'm off for the next three days. It's lovely. I am going to be finishing the uh, script for the Morty and Iron Guard, and I'm instantly going to be going into recording that. And I'm going to be checking out a lot of stuff. I cannot wait. I can't wait. Injury, she's been snowed in all week? Good God. Favorite fictional gun, the BMFG from Doom. Are you kidding me? You can't beat that. <laughs> Um, I'm just hoping that this sniffling problem that I've got isn't going to turn into something else. Because that would suck. <coughs> Don't mind my cough. But anyhow, guys, it's Zach. It's Mike Burnfire. Let's just get into it. I might. Ha it's 10 degrees. It's like 6 here now, dude. It's 6 where I'm at. So I am right there with you in the freezing department. In fact... Let me go ahead and do this real quick. I'm going to go ahead and... I have a heated blanket, and I, if you guys have noticed, I've had a heated blanket coming around. Also, if you've been uh, if you've been checking out the streams where we're playing, um, we're, we're playing Lethal Company, I'm definitely going to be making a, a video about some of our stupidity in there. Because, um, aside from me screaming like a child, it's been a lot of fun. There we go. Oh. oh my goodness. Oh, and yes, Frostpunk. Frostpunk 2's official trailer has come out. I cannot wait. Um, I'm actually going to be checking that out after I stand up from here. Um, I, I just can't wait, dude. I, I honestly can't wait. So... <sighs> What what what's it like in the Philippines right now, dude? I haven't even I I don't even know. Um, it's twenty five and windy, so it feels like five buck. I'm not like, we got lucky. Okay, so uh, last week they said we were supposed to get hit by two storms. One was supposed to drop seven inches on us. The other one was supposed to drop uh, about five. Quite simply put. The first one just rained us for like a day and a half. And the second one dropped about two inches of snow on us. And the rest was like a mix. So we don't have much on the floor here. Which I'm glad about. It's zero in Chicago. Your cold water pipes are frozen. Slacker, you're not the only one, dude. My cold water pipes here. Like, um... I gotta see if... I... Because... Because I am, I am just really tired of it. I gotta see if I can't go underneath my. I can't. I can't. I gotta see if I can go underneath my house, and try to uh, run a furnace plant underneath there to kind of dethaw everything. Because it, it, my lines are frozen too. You're 13 in Northwest Oregon. Good God. You're in Buffalo, Willie. What's that looking like? Texas is in the teens. Good God. I know my mother lives in South Carolina. She said it was about 20 degrees. So, I don't know what she's at tonight. I probably should have called her, but um, just didn't have the time. Warpugs. Well, 
You know what warms you up better than a better than anything on a cold night? Hot lead. So let's start talking about some hot lead. We got Zach's Gun Rants Part Four. Uh, Cannonball has been driving this. Cannonball has been really, really happy to drive this. So it was negative thirty-one last night. Thunderclap. Holy God. Uh-uh. No. Negative 20 Celsius constantly. You're in Canada and northwestern Ontario. Ooh, bro. Evan, just stay warm, dude. Stay warm. You're living in 5 degree Ohio. Ronnie, you live in Ohio? Dude, message me. Message me. We gotta meet up. We gotta meet up. You in Michigan near Kalamazoo? <sighs> It snowed in Austin? Yeah, Wyoming. Thunderclap. I okay, so look. When I was in the when I was working as an iron worker, I would frequently have to drive across the country, right? I never wanted to go through Wyoming because anytime I went through Wyoming, it was literally 70 miles an hour wind going over the going over the road. Threatening to like with like 110 to 120 uh, mile per hour gusts. For no reason. Oh. Oh, man. You had frozen pipes before it melted the pipes, but, dude, that sucks. Yeah. Well, my mother actually asked me about the uh, humidity here. I'd much rather be in the desert. Like, I when, when I started this channel, I was over in Reno. And negative 20 over there? <sighs> negative 20 over in Reno is not that bad to be completely honest it is not that bad my cat is currently bothering me dude I'm not throwing shade at your winds like I'm just saying I prefer not to become a kite while I'm driving cat would you stop it would you like I'm not in an earthquake zone please stop making it look like that come on over here come on over here and lay down stop acting all crazy Okay, you just want to stay over there now. Okay. Well, War Pugs, let's get started. Oh, man. I just hope everyone is staying warm tonight, okay? I hope every, everyone is staying warm. Weird doesn't have to worry about it. Thanks, Weird. Weird is in the middle of summer, but the, the one thing that I have to say about Weird being warm when the rest of us are cold is the sheer fact of the matter is... Um, we don't have to deal with Katachan level wildlife, so there we go. Yes. Oh, speaking of which, um, I'm coming out with a couple of shirts. I've got an artist that is finalizing one right now, finalizing the design right now. I've got another design that I've actually built up and I'm going to finish that out. Um, so we're going to be doing that soon. Would you stop going behind the... This cat. All right. Shutting up. Let's go. What's up, Tristan? Let's go. Let's listen to some guns. Here we go. All right. So you have your inflammatory remark back. Doesn't feel weird. I didn't adjust the stock in a weird position. As long as the zero is fine, I don't care. It's still zeroed. What do you think? I am a pleb? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how guns work. <clears throat> what in the hell is this abomination to John Moses Browning's holy name? <laughs> I always thought the pipe gun was an abomination. Uh, looks like a gun. In that it shares some characteristics with a gun. Sure. It's a nightmare. Oh, what do you mean by that? Look at it. It looks like absolute dog piss. <laughs> I don't think a function over form. So Ugh. As long as it can propel a bullet down range. The magazine is sticking out of the side of it. The barrel is literally made from a piece of steel okay. that is welded together. First things first, just because the magazine's sticking out of the side doesn't mean it's bad. It means it's an Uzi. No, that means it's a MP18. <laughs> like, an Uzi has the magazine sticking out of the bottom. Are you sure? Yes, I'm 100% positive. Mm, no, I don't think so. Let's see how well it works. <laughs> and, and, uh, functions correctly. I can make a heavier receiver for my he for my pipe pistol. It's, yeah, you like your your pistol that much? Your pipe pistol? No, I absolutely hate it. But I mean, it. Oh, Grab stock. Oh, sorry, <laughs> That's not. I would. I never wasted time or materials trying to uh, improve pipe pistols. 
I just don't understand the need or the desire to. You got bushfires in 95 degree heat? No, thank you. I'm so glad I'm not near California anymore because every single time I turned around in California, there was another wildfire. Yes, Zach is a treasure. Let's go. It's not a reflex sight. That's a piece of pipe with two nails drilled in it. <laughs> oh, good God. That's this, a shotgun, huh? This is terrifying. <laughs> this is just a freaking blunderbuss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> I kinda figured it's would. a freaking zip gun. Oh, this is bad. This a, is real bad. A zip gun, you say? Yeah, it's basically made out of two pieces of metal that you just bang them together and it shoots. Oh, okay. You got a bayonet on it too, I see. Yeah, I do not want to use this, especially- If you can't kill something with that gun at the range that that gun's going to go at, what makes you think for any reason that a bayonet will kill what you just shot at? with how long it takes to reload this piece of crap. Is it a single fire shot? It's a single shot. Mm. It's real bad. If you were desperate for a gun, maybe. If I was desperate, but I also have a semi-automatic 12 gauge that does way better than this. Mm, we'll stick with that. It's the PPSHBAR. It's not though. It got it, it's so it's got the top cover of a PPSH 41 for some reason, but then the magazine of a Browning automatic rifle and then the foregrip of a Browning automatic rifle. Well, oh, what kind of stock does it have? Uh, it's got a PPSH 41 stock on it. <laughs> it's not well designed. <laughs> what? It looks like a Villar Perosa in that it has two barrels, but it's also got like the gas system of an AK on it. So, okay, this is really weird because you got the barrels and you got this thing on the top, which I would presume would be the gas piston system, unless that's just a gas tube. But then why is there an op rod on the bottom? <laughs> why does that have the handguard of an M60 on it? It's also got like the takedown lever of an AK. What even is this? I'm still fixated on the double barrel. Who needs that many barrels? It's what? so extravagant. What? Look, you can always have more DACA, okay? You can always have more DACA. Hey, is it also made of license plates and the speed limit signs? <laughs> Behold, the Dragnov. Yes. I find it kind of interesting that there's a pick rail on the top of this, because I wouldn't necessarily put a pick rail on the top. That's why it's got the side mount for a scope. The reason I wouldn't put an optic on top of the top cover is because the top cover can wobble around, so it means that your optic isn't really gonna stay zeroed. Oh, that's a problem. Not a great idea. So, the... Ever play Mass Effect? No, I haven't. the front end of an AS Val. Why are you putting the front end of an AS Val on a 760 by 54R? What? Time to make a Frankenstein gun! <laughs> Put an acro on this? Ew, Barska. Ugh. Not a big fan of Barska sights? Oh, God, they're terrible optics. How so? They have a hard time holding zero. They don't hold up to abuse. Not very good. What are you basing this opinion on? Your personal experience? My personal experience with Barskas. They're what's, okay. What's the sample size on that? Uh, several Barskas and also several that customers have owned. Mm. PSO one, which is the optic that should be on it. Are you going to put it on it? No, I'm going to use this thing with iron sights. Uh, all right. I'm going to use a drag knob as a battle rifle, well, even though that's not something you're supposed to do. You there you go. Optic. Okay. The Dragnov isn't technically a sniper rifle, it's really more of a designated marksman rifle. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of the PSO-1 because it doesn't have adjustable eye relief, and your eye has to get pretty close to the back of it. And because the Dragnov has quite a bit of recoil, they put this rubber cup on the end of it. Uh, it's more of the recoil. It's just supposed to smush into your face. Uh-huh. Doesn't work great! <laughs> <laughs> no, you kind of just end up bonking yourself with it a lot. Ah, uh, right in the eye. There you I go. I also find it funny that when they built the Dragnov, they also put a bayonet lug on it. And normally, your barrel's supposed to be that long. Three and a half foot long rifle with a bayonet on the end of it that basically just turns it into a small lance. Well, at least you're equipped for the cavalry charge of the French army, okay? At least you're equipped for that, okay? The Frankenov! The Frankenov! <laughs> The Dragnov is a 7.62 by 54R semi-automatic rifle. Stop it, Willie. It was designed for the Russian military to give the infantry a little bit more range than the AK-47 could provide. Yeah, the AK-47 is a good, reliable, all-purpose rifle. This yeah, it's a good infantry rifle, but this is designed more for slightly longer range engagements. So when you got like one guy in a machine gun nest, he would pro he would he would I I I'm calling it now. He would absolutely love the las gun weird. He would absolutely love the las gun. The las gun would he would love that thing but i don't think that he would like the bolt gun that much you can have your designated marksman just pop him with this thing um and 762 by 54r has been around a long time 
the upside is that it's a very high power cartridge that works incredibly well. The Stop downside it, is you that guys. Rimmed cartridges don't exactly like to work well in semi-automatic guns, but the Dragnov seems to do pretty well on handling it. So there's a 7.62 and a 7.62R. Well, there's a 7.62x39, which is what the AK-47 uses. Then there's a 7.62x54R, which is what the Dragnov uses. Good evening. Hi, we're having a conversation. Thank you. <laughs> There's also a 7.62x51 NATO, which is a cartridge that a lot of bolt actions and semi-automatic rifles use. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of this scope. I'm going to change the scope out. So you shot that Dragnov before? I actually used to own one, but it was the civilian version no, of the Dragnov, which was made by Ismosh. It was called the Ismosh Tiger. Didn't have a muzzle brake on it, so decent chunk of recoil. You do end up smacking yourself in the face with a scope a lot because there's no adjustable eye relief. And this one doesn't even have the suction cup, so you can't absorb recoil. Well, the scope's further forward on this one. Yeah, the at least you got that. The military one is kind of even worse because <laughs> the military one just has a metal plate on the stock. Oh, fun stuff. And 7.62x54R is definitely not a comfy recoil. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What do they think 308 ammo is? Because apparently the high caliber, it says larger... Five millimeter rounds. Do you know what, what 308 is in millimeters? <laughs> Almost eight millimeters. <laughs> is eight millimeters bigger than five millimeters? Gee, I don't know, Mike. No, you Sean. can do math. What do you think? <laughs> you can't do gun math. You guys have weird rules. No, it's it, it, yeah. Eight millimeters is bigger than five millimeters. Oh yeah. But is it really? No. Uh, Mr. Python, I am going to be checking out the F Frostpunk 2 trailer soon. I can't wait to see it. I'm going to stream myself playing it if I can if I can at all manage it. PP-19 Bison. Oh, God. There it is. Yeah, all right. Looks like an AK-47. Wait, no, it doesn't. It's got the same top cover as an AK-47. Okay, it's okay, it's got the same top cover. It sure. is derived from an AK-47. It uses 9x19mm from this weird helical magazine on the bottom. Check this out. Then we're going to shoot it for a second. Now watch me reload it. That's the magazine. Yeah, it's like a like a 50-something round magazine. That is a weird way to do the magazines. Yeah, yep. it's very weird, but apparently they, they work okay. Of all the weapons you could have gotten, you got two submachine guns. Yeah, I love submachine guns. That's pretty good. Yeah. So that weird knobby thing coming out the He's going to see the assault handle. rifle. He's going to have a it's panic not the attack. Eyesight. You, don't, you, don't, you don't put your eye on that? No, no. That's the that's the charging handle. This mm. is... You pull the lever back like a pinball machine? Yeah, yeah, like that. Really? Yeah, you pull back on that thing to charge it. Good grief. Anyway, it's designed by Saab and Bofors. It's interesting in that the barrel can be removed and you can immediately change it over to six by... A six millimeter projectile that can be used for training... But they do also have a tungsten armored penetrator. It can fire multiple yeah. calibers of bullets? Yeah, just by literally changing the barrel. Nice. So, so you would be able to rotate out the upper receiver? No, you just take the whole barrel out the front of it. You, you just remove the barrel? You remove the barrel, put a new barrel in it, and now you have it shoot tungsten armor-piercing projectiles. Huh. Why wouldn't you just use armor-piercing bullets of the same caliber? Uh, because 9 mil armor-piercing bullets don't work great. I'm okay. <laughs> Weird ass. Why play Frostbook? You're living in it. Dude, last year I was living in it. Last year was negative 20 degrees for like five days in a row with 70 mile an hour winds. Okay? I'm going to have to download Frostpunk tonight. What the hell? Hey, with weird submachine guns. I love submachine guns so much. They're just not your favorite. No, submachine guns are like my favorite weapons. Huh? I like submachine guns more than I like assault rifles. Why? You just like the volume of fire? I just love having a small weapon with a whole lot of volume of fire potential in 9mm. I when can't I argue with military, that. I kept trying to order MP5 submachine guns and use them instead of my M4. Uh, they were not happy every time <laughs> I tried to order those. <laughs> What's the difference between a submachine gun and an assault rifle in, in this context? In this context, a submachine gun is anything in like a pistol caliber or like a smaller than rifle caliber. Oh, so it's just the caliber of bullet. They're basically the same gun. This is basically like the helical magazine on the Bison that I showed you a second ago, only it has a long tab that goes all yes, the way up onto the inside. So basically the bullets keep on going past your hand to get into the gun. Yeah. It's so weird. This thing is fun. I like this. <laughs> I'm more excited about this than I am about the Dragonauts. I never have been one for, like, the assault rifles. I've always been more inclined toward SMGs. 
I always have been. Zach has forgotten more gun knowledge than any of us will ever learn. Dude, Liam, Zach learned all his gun knowledge, forgot it all, learned it again, forgot it again, got drunk, hit his head, forgot most of it, then got Alzheimer's, and then 20 years later, he still knows more than we'll, we'll ever learn. Okay? That is... It's nuts how much he knows about guns. And the fun part about it is, I'm not sitting here watching somebody like display stuff. It's just in bullshitting. And I love it. Thank you, Liam. You've got snowed in for a week and you had to dig your way with the bucket because your shovel broke? No. No. Oh, it sucks. I'm, I'm oh. actually very excited about this. I, yeah. I've never heard of this gun before. I've heard of the Dragnov. Yeah, it's a Swedish gun. Not it's the, a Swedish not the gun. Drag -nob. The Dragnov's a Russian. No, gun. the Dragnov's Russian. This is Swedish and it's intended as. It's kind you of weird me, SMG. It's like a personal defense weapon slash submachine gun, but it also can be used as a squad automatic weapon. It's a multi role like submachine gun thingy, and I'm actually very excited about it. I think it's really cool. <laughs> Sounds versatile. Yeah. Bison! Somebody rechambered the barrel, I guess. Yeah, they, they, well, they swapped out the barrel for a 10 mil, I guess. That's what I said. They rechambered the barrel. No, they just swapped out the barrel. They didn't rechamber it. They just swapped it out. So rechambering means. No, rechambering means you actually took the barrel and bored it out for another chamber. Maybe ah. they did. What a weird. I'll never get over how weird that magazine is. Yeah, it's real weird, but apparently <laughs> they are somewhat effective. But then why don't other guns adopt that same style? Uh, it's kind of hard to do it with anything other than a uh, than nine millimeter or like pistol calibers. Whoa, Scorpion! Why are all the guns left-handed in this world? They all what? eject out of the left side of the receiver. <laughs> you think they all the lefties in uh, service? Like they conscripted the lefties? That's pop. Are you having problems? A little. I also found this yeah. thing. Oh, 9mm pistol. No, it's a Stetchkin APS. What, what kind of caliber bullet does it fire? Uh, I think 9 by 18 Oh, so 9mm. It's, <laughs> it's full auto. Jeez. Yeah. I'm not going to use it. No? This thing just... I never understood fully automatic pistols. I never will understand fully automatic pistols. You have to be lifting since childbirth to actually hold the thing and not recoil it right out of your damned hands. Wastes ammo! You point at the mailbox, you're like, hands up, mailbox! Hands up, mailbox! And the mailbox <laughs> is like, I'll take you down, and so you pull the trigger on it and... Oh my god, oh my god! Ah! Now that you put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Don't need it. Yeah, Stetchkin APS. It's an interesting idea in concept because, like a lot of other small submachine guns or fully automatic pistols, it was designed for, like, tank crews or people that couldn't carry around a full-size rifle. That Why makes they sense. they make it automatic? Uh, because it does have a small stock that's supposed to attach to it, but even with the stock on it, it's real hard to control. Yeah, exactly. So why would you have it full auto? It doesn't it seem... It does have a selector lever. This one seems broken, though. I can't switch it off full auto. Mm. Mm. Even still, why even have the option? It sounds ridiculous. You burn through all your ammo, then you gotta... I mean, if you're, like, two feet away from somebody and you just pulled down the trigger on this thing, you True. would absolutely riddle them with lead. <laughs> Goodness. What in the yeah, absolute... not actually... What the hell is that? What is that hot garbage right there? Work. What? They don't make an EOTech that small. What the? F That's why it's called a micro reflex sight. Zach. Somebody. What? Oh my god. <laughs> Somebody was goofing. Somebody was goofing and made dumb stuff. Somebody was goofing and made dumb stuff. There's no rail mount on the bottom of a Stetchkin. <laughs> 45 conversion flashe rounds? It's a. <laughs> it's a pistol! It doesn't even shoot flashe rounds! It will if you give it the conversion! No! Yeah, that's a, that's a lever action rifle, alright. What kind of lever action? It's based on a Henry lever action, and for some reason the rear sight looks like it was stolen from a Benelli shotgun. <laughs> ah, but. Another mishmash. Oh my god, there is a death claw over there. Dance, do not go that way. That definitely does not look like a normal hammer for a rifle. No, it's got like a little tab sticking out of the side because it's designed so that if you have a scope, you can still access the hammer. 
Because a lot of times when you put a scope on a lever action, you can't get to the hammer anymore. Yeah, Deathclaw's pissed off. Our lord and savior, John Moses Browning. <laughs> was like, hey, we want a lever action. And he went, okie dokie, and knocked it out of the park in less than 30 days. It's freaking ridiculous. And then He's still on about that Winchester. I don't blame him. That The Winchester's a hell of a gun. They named a gun company after him because the gun company was so impressed. No, he's just started his own gun company. What? To compete with Browning? That seems counterproductive. Yes, Mike, to compete with Browning. To compete with Browning, John Browning started his own gun company. He also named it Browning. It was very confusing. Yes. No, the name of his gun company was uh, Harrington and Richardson. And then the Harrington and Richardson brothers founded Webley. And then Webley founded the Heckler and Koch. And then uh, Heckler and Koch started um, High Point. And then High Point started Low Point. <laughs> high Point is the Low Point, okay? High Point is the Low Point. And then Low Point started... <coughs> I'm done with <laughs> that. That joke is stupid and I hate it. <laughs> if I remember correctly, that gun was made by Fabrique National. Yes, it is. And it, I'm surprised you remembered that. And it's called the FNFAL because it stands for Fabrique National Fabricated... Oh, I was doing so well. I, I guess. Ah, yeah, you lost it. You, ah, you lost it. Fabrique... Assault and Adam. Really? FAL is commonly referred to as the right arm of the free world. Yeah, okay. Due to the fact that almost every single Western country during the Cold War used an FAL. Mm -hmm. Must have been good branding for that company. Yeah. The U.S. insisted every Western nation had to standardize their ammo. And for some reason, the U.S. went all in on 308. Not, wait, not 5.56? Five, five, no, the U.S. went all in on, well, 7.62 by 51 millimeter. Everybody has to use 7.62 by 51 millimeter. Wait, you just said a different number now. Yeah. 7.62 by 51 and 308 are effectively the same cartridge, though, if I'm going to be pedantic, which I am, <laughs> of course. you can't use 308 in a rifle that is chambered for 7.62, but you can use 7.62 in a rifle that is chambered for 308. American military is like, all right, everybody has to use 308 because we want a 308 rifle. Oh, We're I, I, unwilling to move away from 30 6 I think I heard this story. Yeah, uh, America and its allies said they're going to use 762. And then the Soviets said, oh, oh, okay. Then we're going to make our guns that are 762 as well. That way, once we kill you, we can scavenge your ammo and use it in our guns. No. And that's when America said, oh, yeah? Well, guess what? We lied about that. <sighs> now all of our guns are in 5.56. Five, ha, 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 you lose. No. no. Is, that's not true? No. How close was I? No. You, you were not close at all. <laughs> you can't use the American 7.62 cartridge in an AK-47. And then the Soviets said... Yeah, 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 yeah. anyway. <laughs> Everybody has to use 7.62, and Britain's like, well, we did a bunch of research after World War II, and we are working on this intermediate cartridge that has very low recoil and very high velocity, and we think it shows a lot of promise. Look, here's our EM-2 rifle, and America went, no, fuck you. You're not using that. You're using 7.62 NATO, and Britain went, okay, fine. We'll use the FNFAL. So everybody's switching over to the FNFAL or the G3, and Fabrique National goes, Hey, U.S. military, we switched over to 7.62, just like you asked. Here's this cool new rifle. So you guys are going to use the FAL, right? Because we switched over to the caliber you wanted, and the U.S. went, ah, no, 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 no. We modified our M1 Garands to take magazines and work worse. <laughs> M14. We're using that instead. I hated the M14 so damn much. It was such a piece of shit. I hated it. That gun, it was effectively, it was effectively a plank of wood, okay? Effectively. Now, you could shoot straight with it. Uh, it. It would shoot straight, but the damn thing weighed a half ton, and it was just so damn unbalanced, it was a pain in the ass. <laughs> I guess someone else got a lower bid on the contract. The U.S. took the M14 instead of the FAL, and the M14 was a massive disappointment. Yes. Well, the M14... But for some reason, we put them on every Navy ship, and we had to stand watch with these pieces of crap. Like... I... Like, I... Uh, there was so much... That sucked. No. Tina is still a pretty good weapon. It's not. It isn't. The U.S. military spent millions of dollars and 30 years 
trying to turn the M14 into a sniper rifle. And it still doesn't work. I don't care if you put a sight on it. I don't care if you laser guide the fucking munitions in. The M14 fucking sucks. And what they succeeded in doing was making the M14 weigh 20 pounds and not be able to shoot Scary. one MOA groups. Ow! And the thing about it is, you're sitting there with this 20 pound lump of crap on your shoulder for a six hour watch and you just want to die. You just want to die. And every time you transit the Suez Canal, you don't want to be the guy that scored that uh, scored expert sniper because they're going to put a scope on this piece of shit and put you up in the nest. And your life's going to suck. Tell me one interesting fact about the FAL. I can't go on enough about how much I hate the M14. I had to deal with this piece of crap gun we had this thing for so unrelentingly fucking long. Unrelentingly fucking long. The the only... The, there was no decent part about it. It was uncomfortable to hold. It was uncomfortable to sight down. It felt like you had an elephant sitting on the end of the damn thing. Um, When we finally got the M4s, like, you couldn't... You couldn't pay me $50 to take a six-hour watch with the M14 because I will just take the M4 every single day of my life past that point. I, I will take the M4 every single time because I don't have to sit there and do any advanced physics to sit there and figure out how to get the caloric intake right. It sucked so fucking bad. It is a tilting bolt mechanism. Which is a feature that it shares with the SKS rifle and a lot of other military rifles from the 1950s, honestly. Okay, now explain what that even means. You know how you're M16? I got some with... spear cams if you want. Just ask me. No. You know, when you're M16, you <laughs> see a bull rat with a tan. It means the summer's gonna be a long one. What in the fuck does that mean, sir? What? <laughs> this is not five, six, which is not correct, but... Oh, God, someone chopped the barrel down on this poor thing. What's the difference between an M14 and M1 Garand? Okay, M1 Garand is actual decent about is actual decent rifle, okay? It's an actually decent rifle, okay? The M14, on the other hand, is what happens if you have a bunch of people trying to design, trying to design an upgrade to that, but instead of doing anything to improve it, they just make it heavier, make the iron sight suck, make the reload mechanism a pain in the ass, turn the receiver into the thing that's literally going to tear the webbing of your hand off, and make it to where you never know how much pressure you're going to have to apply to the trigger. Also, the thing recoils like a son of a bitch, and for some fucking stupid reason, they put this little plate where you can flip up the plate and set the plate on your shoulder, but it only works if you're five fucking two and weigh 45 pounds. Otherwise, you're sitting there crimping your shoulder up looking like you got Tourette's trying to aim this son of a bitch. The damn thing weighs 20 fucking pounds because, like he said, they wanted to put the goddamn thing with a fucking sniper uh, sniper thing on it for some f stupid reason because the thing isn't accurate past 120 yards. And every single time you shot it, the little plate, they never had it where the plate was flush. So you'd sit there and it would sound like a robot was clapping every time you shot the fucking thing. There's a reason we didn't go... When I did boardings, we didn't go out with the M1. I took a fucking shotgun rather than... I mean, not the M1, the M14. I took a fucking shotgun rather than the M14. There was... there was it, That's all it is, Reyna. It's a fucking club. You can't do anything with it. It's a piece of shit. It's an absolute piece of shit. Ugh! Getting off the M, getting off the M14. <laughs> is that a collage? YouTube is purposely reducing reactivity and video speed to combat ad block. <sighs> really weird. That fucking sucks. That fucking sucks. No, Thunder, you have no idea how many times the webbing of my hand got caught in that fucking slot. Mmm. The cop. What did they do to it? 
it! <laughs> oh, God! Not your favorite version of the Kalash? Oh, my God! It's been butchered! <laughs> So you say it normally has a longer barrel? Oh god, it's normally much longer. Also, the barrel is... The barrel's right in front of the gas block. How does it even have enough pressure to chamber the next cartridge? <laughs> what did they do to it? Maybe they used overpressured ammo. That Kalashnikov needs to be fixed before I can actually use it. The barrel is just absolute garbage. Somebody thought that making the hole in the barrel bigger would make the gun do more damage. Um, so they drilled out the inside of the barrel, so now the bullets are just ricocheting down the barrel when they come out. Oh, are you saying they drilled holes in the wrong place? They made up the hole inside the barrel bigger. Which makes it better, yes? No, that makes it worse. That means the bullet just bounces down the inside of the barrel when you fire it. Like a pachinko machine. Yes, like a pachinko machine. Fire. Oh, a Sega 12! That's not the gun we came here for. It's not, but it's a gun that I want. Yes! 12-gauge semi-automatic shotgun. Ooh, why oh. do you like the Saiga so much? Uh, well, the Saiga is basically an AK-47 chambered in 12-gauge. <laughs> Shit! So it's just an AK-47 a different caliber. It's AK-47 in 12-gauge, so you get the AK-47 reliability, but 12-gauge shotgun shells. That's so sick. Wait, wait, it's an AK that fires shotgun shells? Yes. Yeah, boy! I got a FAMAS! It is legendary and <laughs> iconic. Oh, it's so cool! Whoa! <laughs> yes! Matthew, you could... It, it, if they just threw a whole bunch of M14s down in front of a steamroll and ran over them, I would feel such catharsis. I would feel such catharsis. It was... Such a piece of trash, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> yes, my boy! Frickin' Bamas. Oh, I love this gun. It's, uh, in 9mm, I believe? 5.56. Five, five, that's, that's roughly the same size, but I probably should know that by now. It, it isn't the same size, Mike. <laughs> it's almost 5mm smaller. No, uh... 9 millimeter is in 9 millimeter, but 5.56 five, is in Oh, inches. weird. That's, no, it's in that's millimeters. That's crazy. Th it thank really you, dude. It's 5.56 by 45 so millimeter. Oh, shit, you're right. 223 is the is what it would be in oh. inches. It looks like I'm going to have to give up my reputation as being the primo gun expert. Oh. Okay. Apparently you will. Oh, my. Dude, the first time I saw FAMAS, I didn't know what to make of it. I thought it was the sexiest gun I ever saw in my fucking life. All right? I, I was sitting there like, God, that is one... It, I, that is one ridiculously good-looking gun. My god, I am so glad I have this gun right now. <laughs> this makes me so happy. I found two amazing guns today. Which would you prefer if you had to pick one? If I could only pick one? Yes, the Saiga or the FAMAS? The FAMAS. Would it be in your top five firearms of all time? It's one of my favorite guns. It's just so cool-looking. It is sleek and identifiable, and I believe ambidextrous, yes? Um, you can convert... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the P90. I always get those two confused. Yeah. They're both sleek, You can awesome convert guns. this to be left-handed. Yeah, all right. The, the problem with bullpups is you can't really fire them left-handed because it will just eject brass directly into your cheek. Wait, is the FAMAS yeah. a bullpup? Yeah, it is. Magazine's behind the trigger. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me throw this on the ground so I can show it to you. Let me save first. <laughs> It's like it's not really going to be much to look at. It's uh, it's an AK, but it fires shots. It's an AK shells. and 12 gauge. So to make the AK a Saiga, you pretty much have to make the, the barrel bigger to you, accompany the shot. You make the barrel bigger, and you make the magazine bigger, and you make it have a bigger bolt. Mm -hmm. And then there you go. I don't know what technical species of gun the assault the assault rifle from fallout is but i can't wait for him to get to that because he's gonna have a stroke okay oh now you have a saiga that's it huh it's it really is pretty much just an ak in 12 gauge <laughs> okay they make the saiga in different calibers like they make it in 12 gauge they make it in 20 gauge they also make one in 410 <laughs> um which 410 isn't a gauge but people were used to refer to it as a gauge whatever yeah i'm i'm very glad that we found this i'm very glad i have it but more importantly the FAMAS, which is indeed a bullpup. The magazine is behind yes. the finger guard. The, the trigger, the, yes. The handle holder. So, a couple interesting things about the FAMAS. It was 
incredibly futuristic when it first came out, just like the just like the Styrog. Mm-hmm. The entire carry handle assembly, the big rectangular thing on the top of it. Mm-hmm. The carry handle and sight assembly is actually made almost entirely out of plastic. The lever on the back, behind the magazine here, switches between three-round burst or full auto. <sighs> Interesting fact, this is one of the only NATO guns that was originally designed to use steel-cased ammo. I didn't realize that was a thing. Most NATO countries use brass-cased ammo, but the FAMAS use steel case because it's got a really high extraction pressure. So it, you kind of have to use steel shell casings because the original ones had problems with ripping brass shell casings in half. Well, are you Damn. saying that the FAMAS aren't designed to use brass casings? The original ones weren't. Oh, but the newer ones probably the are. The newer ones, yeah, the newer ones are. Uh, I think you're... Just look at that gun. That gun is so fucking... That, like... It looks so different. When when I first saw the FAMAS, it looked so different than anything I had ever seen. Like, as far as a gun went, I absolutely just love this gun. You're not supposed to use that thing on top as a carrying handle. It's referred to as a carrying handle, but I think soldiers got yelled at when they use it as a carrying handle. I wonder if the French military got used that for that, because I don't care what anybody says. The thing on the top that they say isn't a carry handle it's might a carry as well handle. just be a carry handle because that's what you <laughs> that's what people primarily end up using it well, for. Well, it's detachable, isn't it? Or is it part of the frame? On the on this FAMAS, it is not detachable. Are there FAMASs where it is detachable? The That would be the FAMAS G2 Felon. If the carrying handle is detachable, then carrying it by that would change your zero if it got shaken loose. No, no. not really, because the sights are mounted directly to like the barrel, oh. so they're they're pretty much gonna stay there just fine. Wait, wait a second. Nice. Are the sights on top of the carrying handle or underneath it? They're on top of the carrying handle. Oh yeah, this one. Okay, so this like this gun is this this is a sexy ass gun. This one is the second version of the FAMAS because this one has the weird trigger guard that co- covers the entire grip. And then also, this one is adapted to <laughs> NATO mags. Because the original FAMAS had, like, specific 25-round magazines that were straight. Mm. Um, also, if you look on the barrel, you see those weird ridges on there? Yeah. That's so that ring can move further forward and backwards so that you can launch rifle grenades. Rifle grenades? Yeah, you basically just shove a grenade over the end of the muzzle and you fire a blank into it. And then it launches a rifle grenade. Nice. Almost like a pinball machine where you put a grenade at the end of your gun? Yeah, I guess you can equate it to like that, yeah. So, you pull the pin on the grenade at the end of your gun? Oh, no, 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 no. The, the rifle grenades are, like, are, are, are totally different. So it's one of those ones where it spins a bit and activates? Uh, it's something like that. I think the act of firing it causes it to arm the grenade. Uh, okay. But, uh, still, though, you're basically launching a grenade by firing a bullet at the grenade? Uh, no, it's a blank. You shoot a blank. What if you forget to load blanks in there? Oh. Um, then you're just shooting a a bullet at a grenade that's point blank. Yeah, I think they, they technically have safety mechanisms that should keep them from going off, but I still <laughs> wouldn't want to do it. it. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm like, hella stoked we got this thing. The FAMAS has a stupid high firing rate. Yes, it does. Yeah, <laughs> as you can see. Yes. Um, I'm very stoked that we have this. Also, the model the guy used for this is absolutely gorgeous. He did such a good job making this making this model. Would you like to take it back to base and Frankenstein the hell out of no. it? No. I kind of would, yeah. No, please. So, you might recognize the FAMAS from the game Metal Gear Solid. Uh, that is the first time that I saw that. Yeah. Um, which, a lot of people, myself included, thought it was kind of weird that it's a bunch of U.S. Special Operations soldiers in Alaska using French-made assault rifles. That is weird. You know why they use the FAMAS in that game? I don't. Because it's it's super blocky looking, <laughs> and it made it really easy to render it on a PlayStation <laughs> One graphics. Really? Yeah, that's the entire reason they use the Mark Twenty Three SOCOM as well, is because it's nice. an incredibly blocky looking handgun. <laughs> All right. It doesn't have anything to do with its performance or its history. It's just that it blocky. So that's the reason they had a French assault rifle. That's it. That is the reason that it was a bunch of U.S. troops armed with a French assault rifle. I think they had some reason in game why they were, but I don't remember what it was. Nice. So we got a rest. Oh, look! You can get the felon receiver. That is one of the advantages of a bullpup. Is this standard civilian barrel is probably like a twenty-something inch barrel, but this whole rifle is probably about only the same length as like an M4 carbine. Yeah. Because you have the magazine at the very end. Because the magazine's at the very end of it, yeah. 
What are what's the negative to having a bullpup like that? The negative to having is a bullpup is it does require. Oh look, you can make have the standard F one receiver. Is it awkward to load a magazine like that? It can be. It does technically require more training. Oh, I can put the actual laser that they had on the FAMAS on this? <laughs> Apparently. Okay, yeah, we'll try that. There Yay! you go. Hey, I can put the curd fill in by on there. There you go. In my opinion, there are more upsides to a bullpup rifle than there are downsides. However, that is entirely my opinion. A lot of people disagree. A lot of people say bullpups are inferior and there's no reason to use them. If you want a rifle that's very compact and still gives you the same accuracy, is like a longer barreled rifle. Yeah, but downsides, can't really shoot it left-handed unless you get one that's converted over. And it does take a different manual of arms to get used to. Why, why, why can't it be ambidextrous? That's where all the shell casings come out. On the other side of the rifle, that's where your cheek goes. So you try to shoot it left-handed, you're gonna be eating all that brass. <laughs> oh, 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 I see. And if I put my face right there, all the brass are gonna be. Oh, 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 yeah, you will just be eating brass. That that magazine is a surefire 60 round magazine for an AR-15. It is not a 12 gauge magazine. <laughs> I, uh, you know, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> the more you dick around with that Saiga, the more it looks like an actual AK. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just putting wood furniture on it. There you, know, you go. For giggles. <laughs> Give it the French name, Zach. Central, give it the, give I it get the, you. The name that FAMAS stands for. I don't know what it stands then for. Make up an acronym. Seal de automatique. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Assault shotgun. Fun and me ass shoot. <laughs> That's what FAMAS now stands for. There you go. From this point on. Put it in the history book. <laughs> What is Ivan uh, the Chungus? Yeah, I keep forgetting that's a shotgun because I look at it and immediately think assault rifle. Yeah, but it's not. It's a shotgun. Whoa! Ugh. Oh, this is not awful trying to aim through irons at all. This is not like a horrible, horrible tunnel vision. <laughs> oh my god, I hate it. <laughs> gun so you can hate on it. Oh no, it's just so hard to see through irons like this. It looks cool as hell. Especially when you're running. Look at this. Look how cool I look. Yeah, you do. I was trying to think about what the French national anthem was for a second there. What is the French national anthem? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Uh. I cause the garçon. I cause the garçon. I don't think that's the French national anthem. Laissez tomber les filles. Laissez tomber les filles. Ow! No appreciation for the finer things in life! That's not the French National Anthem! It should be! It's good! Ah! Also, I absolutely <laughs> love this FAMAS, though. Like, seriously, I love this gun. If you had to choose, FAMAS or P90? Ooh. That's tough. They're both bullpups. Mm-hmm. The, uh, see, the thing is, the P90 is very effective against things hey, Galaxy. that are wearing body armor. Why is that? It was designed specifically to defeat Russian body armor, and the thing is, if you're wearing body armor, and you get hit with a 5.7 by 28 millimeter shell casing that is actually an armor penetrating round, it will do more damage to you than if you weren't wearing body armor and you got shot with it. This gun was designed to attack Russians? Was it designed during the Cold War? It was designed during the Cold War, and the thinking was, if Russia decides to attack NATO, they're going to be sending... Spetsnaz and special forces troops and paratroopers. So you want to have your rear echelon guys have a gun that is incredibly easy to use, has very little recoil, is easier to use than a pistol, and is capable of defeating body armor. Okay. So that was the point of the P90. By the time NATO finally got off their ass and started doing weapons trials for the P90, I, the Soviet Union had collapsed, so it didn't really fulfill its intended purpose anymore. Uh, on the amount of times that we saw stuff like that happen was incredible. And now like Europe for the Europe for the most part is with the exception of two countries in um the mainland of Europe, nobody has an effective military anymore. Nobody. Like Germany may have one, France may have one, but maybe Poland. But, oh my god. Russian Special Forces, a.k.a. Pain Allegiance. Dude, 
I was telling people for years that Russia was a paper tiger, and they went off and proved me right. Unfortunately, the war was over, damn it. The thing that's good about the P90 is 50-round magazine, high rate of fire, very, very low recoil, and armor-piercing bullets. Okay. Put all those things together, and it's a recipe for a tiny laser gun that is very small, very compact, incredibly easy to use, and theoretically capable of just ripping through body armor. So you would choose the P90 for its armor-piercing capabilities? Well, the other thing is, though, if I just take a 5.56 rifle, I've just got armor-piercing innately. So you would pick the FAMAS over the P90? Uh... Wh- he can't which gun decide. Is piercing armor, then he can't Out decide. Of the two of them, yeah. Probably the FAMAS because the FAMAS is an actual rifle, and the P90 is not a rifle. No, it's technically a submachine gun. You would definitely ch- pick the FAMAS then, yeah. I probably would pick the FAMAS also because they're like almost impossible to get in the United States. Mm. Money, no object. I'm getting both of them. But if money is an object, with it, which it is, and you're just gonna give me one of the two of them, then I'm taking the FAMAS, and then I'll just buy a P90 later. Okay? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's a Desert Eagle, all Deagle. right. Good God, I'm deaf now. Okay. <laughs> New gun for you. New gun for me? I'm probably not going to use it, to be completely honest. What, really? Yeah, I really have no desire to use a Desert Eagle. Why not? Aren't Desert Eagles cool? Yeah, they're cool, but I wouldn't use one in combat. They're not reliable? So the problem with the Desert Eagle, I'm, I'm going to sum it up real fast for you. The Desert Eagle, they made it in a giant fuck-off bullet. Yes. It's a 50 caliber projectile. Yes. Jeez, okay. That's all you had to say. It's a 50 caliber projectile, and the problem is, mechanically, the Desert Eagle's super interesting. It's a freaking gas piston-driven handgun, which is just weird. Not only that, you're sitting there firing a 50 cal. You're, you're firing 50 cal with a handgun. If you don't hit what you're aiming at, the recoil is going to solve your problem for you. Holy shit, thanks, Prince. Your channel is what's probably interested in 40K. Hey, dude, 40K, I, I, I just... Thank you, bud. 40K is like... It's been, it's been something, a passion of mine for 20 years. I can't paint miniatures anymore because of what's going on with my hand right now. And one of these days, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start working out again because I'm a fat ass and I need to start losing weight. But thank you, bud. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, have you started building an army yet? Have you picked out something in particular? Uh, Mr. K- Joe Rogan, if you lived in the U.S., your EDC would be the Stayer A2 FM, uh, MF. Your Dream PPs are the Fall and the Auto 5 and Record M- uh, R4. I can't argue with any of those. I really, really can't argue with any of those. You want a full auto deagle with an extended mag? Which fister are you like 400 pounds, 7 foot 2 of pure muscle? Because if not, you don't need a deagle. Fully automatic. Oh. Oh my god. No, you don't want that. Thank you, Prince. Thank you, Joe Rogan. Thanks, everybody. The super chats, I'm telling you guys, the super chats, and just everybody just checking out. It helps a lot in ways that you guys don't know. I really do appreciate it. Cannonball, it's about time you showed up. You're getting the Imperial Knight for your birthday? Make the Bosnian Knight. Post it in the Discord. I want to see it, please. I want to see it, please. What's up, Meep Meep? I know Meep Meep. I know Hazmat. It's sitting there. I'm waiting on it. I'm waiting on it. The Necrons, Prince? Yeah. Much. I can agree with that. You should check out their ships. You should really check out their ships. The trailer for Prospunk 2 has come out, guys. I, I swear I'm going to get to it. I swear I'm going to get to it. I'm getting to it literally tonight. I'll see if I can't get it up before midnight, but I doubt I'll be able to get it before midnight. Everybody F in chat for Witch Fister's fists because Witch Fister is going to be Witch Nubs after he gets a full automatic deagle. I'm just saying. Don't use Trazen. <laughs> With a rotating lug bolt, also weird, the barrel doesn't... Thank you, Prince. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Meet Meet. optics to the barrel instead of the, Thank instead you, of Joe the slide. Rogan. But the problem is because the bullet is so big and the cartridge is so massive, 
even for somebody like me, I have a hard time controlling the recoil of this thing, and I end up accidentally limp wristing it, and then it doesn't cycle properly. The bullet casing is so big that it recoils sideways to eject the bullet. I, I don't, I don't really know what you said, but yes, <laughs> is this one? This one's in forty. Like seriously, seriously, a deagle. Like I fired a deagle a few times because every somebody brought a deagle to uh, um, a firing range one time when I was still in the military. And of course, everybody wanted to fire it. And this guy charged us five bucks a shell to fire the damn thing. And we all paid like fucking money to fire this damn thing. I think I paid, I paid him 25 bucks to want to fire five rounds out of the Deagle. And I instantly regretted it after three shots, okay? No, Joe Rogan, I haven't heard back from Damien Lee about it. I just, I... She just hasn't messaged me back. Before Magnum, what the hell? When I was a kid, I used to go to the library and check out these like gun magazines from the 1980s and 90s. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah, I'm weird. I I love doing that. But they, I remember seeing an advertisement for the Desert Eagle that was uh, I forget who the competition shooter was, but he fired seven rounds from a Desert Eagle in less than one second. Dang. So like they work. I just. I'm not a huge fan of them. I'd rather use a 1911 or some other combat pistol. 1911 because for me. of less recoil. Yeah, it's less recoil. It's more practical. We'll just take this back home and you can put it on the shelf. Yeah, I'll put, we'll put it on a wall or something. It'll it'll look cool. I feel like I should mod this pistol and give it to Darlene, maybe. Oh yeah, it's not a French pistol though. No, it's Israeli. Well, actually, it's uh, it's made in Wisconsin. <laughs> Is that where the manufacturer is located? The so the Desert Eagle, um, it's called the Desert Eagle because it was designed by Magnum Research, but because they were a small company and oh god, that is a big dude. Because they were a small company and didn't have the manufacturing capacity, they had Israeli military industries out of Israel make them. That so it's a Wisconsin-designed handgun made by Israelis in a giant caliber that's used by gangbangers in American movies. Uh huh. I always wondered why they call it the Desert Eagle. Thanks, weird. Just think, those government contracts are, are going to be subjected to DEI? Uh, do you want a gun or a tank being built by a feminist? I don't care who builds it as long as it fucking works. I don't care who builds it as long as the fucking shit works. And it's good if it's if it works. I don't care who builds the damn thing. Like, one thing, one thing that's very clear, once, you know, it doesn't matter who made, like, if somebody's trying, if somebody, like, like, body armor, stuff like that, you don't care how the shit's made, you don't care who made it, you don't care when it was made, you don't care anything like that, the second that you get hit by something and the damn thing stops a bullet. Flat out. You can set... Galaxy wide, do not have them set it at two times. No, do not... High point does not fucking work, slacker. High point never fucking works. High point is a piece of shit. You're basically spending $110 for a fucking gun that's gonna break after three magazines. Uh, it's used in a lot of movies because it has a very... Why?! Why would you even say that, Slacker? Commanding screen presence. Sorry, I'm just more worried about this giant behemoth. I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll just go around. What in God's holy name is this piece of hot trash? This is something else. Uh, this is something else entirely. That's a weird barrel, I'll say that. It's got a modified grip from a 249 machine gun on it. You mean the lower receiver? <laughs> the thing you're supposed to hold on to the gun, that is straight off of a 249 machine gun. Ooh, okay. But for some reason, it's got part of the barrel jacket from a Lewis gun? I don't know why there's like a water recirculating tube on it. <laughs> because I presume that they looked at a Maxim gun and thought that that would be cool to make it like water cooled, except the Lewis gun is air cooled. It's here! We're here! Thank you, Meep Meep. Tip for Frost Pump, turn on subtitles. That way you can understand everything being said. Making sure from the 11-bit channel because they mainly did the subtitle. 
on like the IGN channel. I hate IGN's translator when they have it up, dude. I will do that, meet me. Thank you very much, dude. Thank you very much. I told you guys he was gonna have a stroke once he saw this fucking thing. I told you he was gonna have a stroke the second he saw this damn thing. This thing does not look like a gun. It looks like some crackhead's version of a gun, okay? If you took a crackhead, pumped them full of crack, and then gave them a bunch of caffeine and told them to draw a gun, this is what they draw. They can got make me anti-aircraft sights on it. Really? <laughs> yeah, these, these sights are straight up anti-aircraft sights. They are. You got a carry handle on the side of it from a saw. It's just a carry handle from some light machine gun. It which is. Makes no sense whatsoever. Believe it or not, Zach, people in the post-apocalypse hodgepodge their guns. This charging handle makes no sense either because the charging handle is it like a weird angle? So it. I don't understand how this charging handle is supposed to manipulate anything. There's not enough room to pull anything back unless it's like attached to a rack and pinion system, or maybe oh it's got my a maxim God. bolt on it. I... Why would it have a maxim bolt on the end? <laughs> disassembly lever from an AK on here. What is that trigger's got weird tabs coming off it, so it's a giant shoe, and it's got a side magazine that only holds twenty rounds. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is such a piece of shit. Oh. <laughs> 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 I remember the first time I picked one of these up, I was like, what in the absolute mothering of fuck am I looking at? I, this is not an assault rifle. <laughs> this is a monster. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. What happened to the Chinese assault rifles that existed in the Capital Wasteland? Oh. Not in the Capital Wasteland. Where's the, the service rifles that the NCR have? We're not in Nevada. Why would you water cool it when it clearly has the back of an air-cooled Lewis gun? I, I, you asking me? I don't know. Are, are you screaming into the abyss? I'm screaming into the abyss about this pointless, god-awful monstrosity that should not be. It's incredibly front-heavy. It is. Every time I try to bring this thing up and shoulder it, I, uh, I can't even control it. I can't control it. It's too heavy. Why do you have to hate some things? Why can't you just like things and then not be interested in others because some things are utter trash and shouldn't exist one man's trash is another man's trash. <laughs> Ugh. oh man i'd feel better using a martini henry than i would using that thing <laughs> uh, so if you had to choose between this assault rifle yes or a single shot rifle in a caliber that doesn't exist anymore i would take the one in the single shot that doesn't exist but zach you're only allowed to have one gun from now on which do you choose this assault rifle or the pancor jackhammer Pancor. Does the Pancor jackhammer actually work, or is it one of the non-functioning prototypes? <laughs> it's one of the functioning prototypes, but every time you have... Oh, come on, Asher. They're going to have to do something with that, because it looks so god-awfully bad. Reload it, you have to disassemble it. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> I guess you'll have to say the assault rifle is not the worst gun you've ever used. Yeah, Dewey, that's no, what it looks the like. assault rifle isn't. I'd take that one and figure out a way to make it lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what the hell is- Okay, this is weird. Oh, it's got th like- that's an XM8. No, it isn't. Okay. It's a made-up gun. It's got a bunch of features from real guns. The stock is reminiscent of a Bushmaster ACR stock. So is the bolt and the little knob right behind the ejection port. But for some reason, on the very back, right in front of where the stock is, there's this little triangle which appears to me to be like a welded piece of sheet metal that looks like the top upper receiver cover of an AK. And then it's got like the magazine well of an M4, but a really weird magazine release on it. That looks like an ergo grip. I don't know what the hell is going on with this handguard right here. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. <laughs> and then for some reason on this side of the gun, there's this little ovoid shape right here yeah i don't know that, what that's that is directly taken off the side of a fn scar but put at an angle 
in the wrong spot on this. I, I'm not entirely sure what's going on. With I this, don't but know it looks what like I'm hot seeing. Garbage, and I don't want to have anything to do with it. Oh, <laughs> ouch. I apologize, but it's not my cup of tea. Yeah, I'm not. Blue <laughs> Lick, it's hilarious. A video games made in the U.S., the country that most gun people are per capita No jack shit about how guns work. Cool factor only. Yeah, Blue. No, the funniest thing is when you have gun people and anti-gun people on the same street. One of the one of the most horrendous things I was looking at was when a senator, this massive anti-gun senator, put two guns that were right next to each other, and I, I can't remember I can't remember the model of the guns, but basically, um, what was this one? One was a single shot. One was a single shot uh, rifle. The other one, I think, it was a mini fourteen. And, um, the person was looking at the single shot rifle and because it had scary things like a trigger guard and, you know, it, it basically the gun, the gun looks scary. That That's what it, like, a, a mini 14 looks like a stick with a metal stick shoved inside of it with a crappy, um, with a crappy shoulder stock. Yeah. Um, but they put the two next to each other and the mini 14 is far Far better of a rifle, flat out, like 100%, 1,000% better. But the person kept on saying that the other one, which was a piece of crap, um, was the more dangerous rifle. And I was just sitting there going, you know nothing. I know jack about guns, and I know that the Mini-14 is a lot better than that gun. A lot more, has a lot more potential to do harm. It's all about how scary the gun is. If it's all about how scary the gun is, if like how like, it's all about to them sometimes. Like, does it have a pistol grip? Does it have this? Does it have that? You can tell which guns are going to be, you know, pointed out for, you know, call the problem because they don't know what they're looking at. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. An M1 Garand is better than a high point? Dude, a potato gun is better than a high point. I'm not. No, really? Is the thing that you called hot garbage not your cup? My wife wanted to get a high point when she was first learning about guns. This caused a rift in our relationship that only healed after time. Of tea? Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize for calling it hot garbage. It is not hot garbage. I just don't like it. I thought it looked cool, but it, maybe it only looked cool to me because if, I don't know anything about Oh, I know. Firearms. I know, Asher. If I knew Asher. about firearms, I would, I would think this looked pretty cool. Um, but, but as a specific firearms nerd, I don't... Oh, no, this is not good. Mm, it doesn't fit my mm, refined taste. <laughs> <laughs> How does the sight seem to you? That front sight looks like it's going to get broken off hella easy. Yeah. It does look fragile. It looks like it would be incredibly easy to break that front sight off. The rear sight's decently robust, but that front sight looks looks sus. Whoa! What the? What? That's fancy. What the hell what is, is this that? thing? That's a pretty bitchin' sniper rifle. Ooh! It's got Nixie tubes! <laughs> Nixie tubes? Yeah! Nixie tubes are like a precursor to liquid crystal displays. Oh, okay. So, before LCDs, we had Nixie T's. It's a laser so, rifle. No. They're just vacuum tubes. Yeah, Nixie. Nixie tubes. tubes. T, T, T stands for tubes. Nobody ever said that. Every number on a Nixie tube is its own filament. Ooh, okay. So zero through nine are all individual filaments in the Nixie tube. And when you want a certain one to light up, you send a current. Okay. So it's like a tiny neon light with ten filaments inside it that you can turn on. They're really cool. I, um, I don't... I think I've seen one of them before, probably because they fell out of fashion with the invention of LCDs. They did. Uh, Joe Rogan, when we get moved into, the, eventually when we do get moved, um, and we have time to we have time to do that. Um, I know my wife wants to get her Glock 11 back, and um, I am going to be like once again. I'm going to buy a, a 1911. I just want to buy a 1911. Um, anything past that for me. It's not so, not anything I'm going to be worried about. Um, 
like we will get a rifle. We will get a rifle, but I haven't really looked into what kind of rifle I want to I want to get. And also, the rifle is mainly going to be for her because she's going to be the one that she she wants to do all this stuff. The rifle is going to be for her. So uh, we're going to figure out exactly you know what she wants. Might go to a couple of ranges, stuff like that. I might even bring you guys along with me for that. But yeah. I'm going to get my 1911 back. She's going to get her Glock back. It's going to be a thing. They did not last very long. They lasted like maybe a decade. And even then, it was only like really high. And crank Gatling gun. Mixie tubes. Oh. I should get a musket for home defense. I'm just saying. Oh, they were the HD DVDs of their time. Kind of. They didn't really have any competition. There's Nixie tubes and there's other ones that are called like Decatron lights, which are super cool. Unfortunately, by the time Nixie tubes became fast enough to make, liquid crystal displays came out and Nixie <laughs> tubes were basically pointless. I'm sure there was a company that invested into Nixie tubes. After 10 years, they finally had the infrastructure in order and then they lost everything. Yeah, Nixie tubes uh, kind of just fell out of favor really quickly because, well, one, they're vacuum tubes and they get hot. Uh huh. Two, they have a tendency to draw a lot of power, especially when compared with liquid crystal displays. Oh. Liquid crystal display means like nothing. Huh. Yeah. You can just you can just slap a half watt battery into a liquid crystal display <laughs> and it'll just sip at it for like ten years. <laughs> yeah. But you slap a Nixie tube on something that requires three volts and it's gonna drain it in a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Also, Nixie tubes can burn out, unlike oh. liquid crystal displays. So really, the only thing Nixie tubes have going for them is they look retro and super cool. That display just looks awesome. It does, yeah. It really hey, does. What do the numbers on that screen read? Um, I can read half the digits, the other half is burned out. <laughs> well, there's a two in the tens place, does that help? Yeah, they're super cool. There's actually a couple companies now that are making Nixie tubes. Oh. Of course, they're the vinyl of its time. Kind of. They're, they're really making Nixie tubes more as like an art form thing. They do them in small quantities. Every single one is completely handmade. Someday I want a Nixie tube. Slacker, read my lips. I will never hold an M14 again, and I don't care what anybody says. Like, I will never will willfully pick up another M14 rifle as long as I live. I hate that gun that much. I hate that gun that damn much. YouTube clock? <laughs> of course. Because I love weird retro shit like that. Yeah. But at this point, they're cost prohibitive. The only Nixie tubes that exist now are ones that are either boutique shop. It's some dude in Poland that's making Nixie tubes because he thinks they're really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Or they're he, old Soviet surplus ones from 1980. And people nice. like you go out and buy those because you think they're really interesting. Don't get me wrong. I would love to buy one of that guy's Nixie tubes. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I would do with it. I'd put it on a shelf and look at it and go, boy, that sure is neat. You would put it right next to your five Geiger counters. I guess you're right, yeah. <laughs> Mike, we'll make you an M16. An M16A2? I can tell by the handguard. Well, it could be an M16A2 or an A3 or an A4. An A4 would have a different handguard. Oh, yeah, the A4 would have a different handguard. Yeah. Wow, you were... Oh. Wow. Okay, a couple things I'm noticing right off the bat. Rear sight is not an L shape and is just molded into this. That front sight's way too narrow. It's missing the little latch that goes on the charging handle. <laughs> oh yeah! The wheel you use to adjust your elevation or the range you're shooting at is yeah. just is a square. I'm not, I'm not trying to diss on someone's model, but the model for this is, this is like PlayStation 2 quality. Ow. <laughs> I'm not trying to insult your model, but your model sucks! Yeah, pretty much. We did find this guy we want the carbine stock standard magazine you made yourself an xm177 huh they basically took an m16 they moved the front sight post way backwards put tiny little hand guards on it and put a two positions collapsible stock on there so this is obviously a gun modified for close quarters it was basically modified to be really small so that it could be broken down into two pieces and fit on the ejection seat of an airplane it was a gun that was going to be carried a lot Rarely, if ever, shot, and it had to work when they needed it to. 
special forces found these things, so special forces started requesting them <laughs> and then taking them. Hey, I want your short little baby gun. It looks cool. Yeah, they wanted a gun that was very short and didn't get caught up on brush, and that's what created the XM-177. Well, they very quickly realized that the problem with the 177 is because it, the barrel was so, so short, it was incredibly loud. If you have an M16 20-inch barrel, you fire rounds out of that, that's not going to be nearly as loud as a gun shooting the exact same cartridge with a 10-and-a-half-inch barrel. Uh-huh. So one of the things they did was they designed this moderator. That which, thing that looks like a suppressor almost? Mm. Yeah. Which the ATF considers, a, considers it a suppressor. I don't think they should... <laughs> because it only lowers the noise by about two decibels. Tactically suppressed. The reason they put this on the end of it was not to make it silent. The reason they put that on the end of it was to make it sound more either like a normal M16 or like an AK-47. Okay. So that when they were shooting at the enemy, the enemy would think that they had encountered a bunch of standard infantry and not a bunch of super sneaky special forces guys. Oh. Because if the enemy thinks that they've encountered standard infantry, they're more likely to pull back, reassess. But if the enemy thinks that they've stumbled across a group of just six super sneaky guys, they're going to push the advantage as hard as they can. That's yeah. true. So by putting this on there, you trick the enemy into thinking that, oh, it's just another normal <laughs> enemy. I want a gun that sounds like a crappy gun, but is cooler. <laughs> the 177 is a super interesting gun. It's actually what spawned the M4. The M4 is pretty much just a 177 with a longer barrel on it. And oh, a, so this is a precursor to the M4. Yes, the XM177 is a precursor to the M4 in Vietnam. Exactly, they Reyna. They took an extra pistol grip that they had laying around. They chopped it down and bolted it onto the handguard, so they had a pistol grip on the front of it. Why? So that when you're shooting it on full auto, you have extra controllability. The handguards aren't good enough? Not really. It's not, Sometimes it's kind of nice to have a vertical grip on the front of it, especially that, if you're that's true. Like spraying like full auto. When you said they attached a grip to the front, I imagine they taped it horizontally to the side. <laughs> oh, no. It's like, it's like straight up and down Unless on the bottom of it. They glued the grip to the, the bottom of the yeah, barrel. Yeah, they just used like a wood screw and attached it to the bottom of the I barrel. I understand. There you go. Technically, this grip is anachronistic because the 177 and the 177E1 would have not had the little finger groove on there. It probably would have been like a Bakelite style grip. Uh, the Ford Assist would be on the E1, but then this would have magazine release fencing around it if it was the 177. Uh, as hard as they tried, they couldn't get it perfect. Well, the problem is there's so many tiny tiny little modifications in between each series of gun. You will never be able to memorize all of the little tiny things, and I still screw stuff up. I'll still be like, oh yeah, no, that one's a 177. I cannot believe he's sitting there dissing his gun knowledge when he's been when he's literally been going for hours about guns. I, I can't believe that. And then someone's like, the, <laughs> the finger grooved on the pistol grip didn't exist until 1969, so you're incorrect. <laughs> Oh, oh, I can build a Department of Energy <coughs> holes. <coughs> what? There was, a, there was a very short period of time where the Department of Energy had, yup, this barrel. Oh, look, it's a suppressed 10 millimeter submachine gun. It takes Colt mags. So there, there was a very <laughs> short period of time where the Department of Energy, for their nuclear facility guarding, they had these submachine guns. A variant of the... I'm not going to say anything, but I saw a guy with one of these. XM8? Uh, no, just a variant of a Colt I... AR-15. Oh. Man, that's cool. That's cool that I can, that I can make that. That's an XM-177? Yes. Is that a variant of the XM8? No. The only way that they are related is in oh, they God. both have the X designation. Are they made by the same company? No, the, the XM is a military prefix. That is not a 177. What is happening with this? Why does it look so weird? What <laughs> happened to my gun? It, what are you talking about? This is not an XM-177. Then why did you name it 177? Someone modified it while I wasn't <laughs> here and turned it into an M16. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, okay. Somebody turned my M16A1 into a dissipator? What the fuck? I have no idea. 
Maybe you're the one that's mistaken. Maybe you give it the dissipator barrel and, and you call it the XM177. Oh, yeah, I'm the one that I... Hey, we all make mistakes. It's okay, man. <laughs> Still understand how much I love this gun. Uh, I don't just like it. I love it. I'm uh, in love with it. Yeah, but you're, you'll definitely cheat on it with a P90. <laughs> it's not cheating. We have an open relationship. Oh, a, a, poly, we have, a polyamorous wow. firearm relationship. The only, the only polyamorous relationships that actually work are ones with guns. Oh, okay. <laughs> the MP5. I would really recommend never doing that. Highly. Time. It's oh. finally mine. He's so happy. <laughs> yes. Your favorite gun of all time. Oh my god, I love this gun. You have no idea. <laughs> I've got a pretty good idea. You have no idea. I know you like that gun. You said it multiple yes! times. Yes! Oh! <laughs> Slap me harder, daddy. Standard dedicated symbol. What did he say? Fine. Uh, ooh. No! No! You don't understand. I need the SD. <laughs> you, you want the SD, but you can't get it? I know how to make a fucking SD handguard. <laughs> Actually, if I put if I put this stock on it, it's exactly how I have mine configured. Oh, there oh, you nice. go. <laughs> Quick eject waffle. Oh, they got the waffle bags. That's fine. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, this is like the Cadillac of submachine guns. Uh, it has a fluted chamber to aid in extraction. However, the downside to that means that it um, you kind of can't really use the shell cases again to like reload them. Fluted is like rifling, but it's a different kind of rifling. Usually, yeah. fluting is on the outside of it. The fluting allows it to be extracted easier. It's uh, like it damages the casing once it's fired. Yeah, but it allows the casing to be extracted much easier. Okay. Yeah. Man, I freaking love this gun. is so good and so popular that HK tried twice to replace it. First, they tried it with the uh, very creatively named HK SMG and SMG2. Um, Could just call it the MP6, but whatever. They tried to replace the MP5 with those, and the Navy went, yeah, they're real cool and all, but um, <laughs> just give us more MP5s. All right. <laughs> so then later they tried to replace it with the H&K UMP, which was in the 45, ump. and everybody that they tried selling it to went, yeah, that's that's really cool. Sure, it's lightweight, no. but uh, no, give me the MP5 back. <laughs> yeah. Everyone just wants the MP5. Yeah, they just want the MP5 because it's just better. better. No need to reinvent the wheel if you've already made the perfect gun. Don't get me wrong. The, the 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 UMP definitely has some advantages. It's generally cheaper to make, but because it's H and K, it still costs more money. The UMP is a really it's it's cheaper to make that one because it's mostly made of polymer. But then again, the MP5 is just made out of stamped sheet steel. Hmm. You hear a lot of people that say, "Oh, you shouldn't slap the charging handle on it. That's not good for the gun." It literally says in the manual you are supposed to slap it. <laughs> Do it. The manual is like, yep, just slap it. It's <laughs> You're not going to hurt it. Chamber the barrel, then slap your gun. Put a new magazine in. Kick it in the dirt for a while. Whenever I show people this MP5, they're always like, why don't you put the collapsible stock on there? And it's like, yeah, the collapsible stock is classic. It looks really good. But the problem with the collapsible stock is it's freaking heavy. And I got to carry this thing around all day. And the other problem, granted, this gun doesn't have a whole lot of recoil, but it kind of feels like just getting hit in the face with a chunk of rebar when you shoot it. So it's not <laughs> a lot of fun. Mm. Operation Nimrod. There you go. Why? Operation Nimrod was the name of the SAS operation to retake the Iranian embassy mm -hmm. in Wait a minute. London? Wait a minute. That's Big Chungus. He named Big Chungus at the 10... That's the 10 millimeter for him. I love it. Big Chungus. Let's go. Okay. Um, and it was actually one of the first times that, uh, anybody really saw the M the MP5 being used by a special operations group. Also, one of the first times that anybody really saw a special operations group do anything. Normally, the fact that they operate in secret is what makes them special. True. It helped that it was on television. Obviously, it makes sense. But it's, sense. it's, uh, kind of the event that brought the MP5 into the, the public zeitgeist, I if see. you will. Ooh, zeitgeist, nice. Yeah. Big words. It's yes! Finally, I can have the MP5 SD that I've always frickin' wanted. Okay. I bought I bought a 20-round mag for my MP5. Um, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> it, yeah, uh, it won't actually seat in my MP5. 
<laughs> no matter what. Like, I lock the bolt back. The magazine is empty. Won't see to my MP5. I don't understand it at all. Did, did you all get right, an MP5 Sean, you have a nice magazine? Or did you get a maybe an AK magazine? No, it's an MP5 magazine. It will not go in there. Also, you can't put an AK magazine in an MP5. Maybe it's an MP5.1. Also, when I completely load the magazine, the the floor plate tries to go boom and launch out the bottom of the magazine. Hmm. Gonna get a refund? It wasn't that expensive. I guess I'm just not gonna use it. You're just gonna eat the cost. Yeah. There is a specific handguard for the MP5 that has a flashlight integrated into it. Yeah. I bought one. The reason you're gonna judge me is because it costs $600. For a component for your firearm. For a handguard. It has a flashlight on it. So I spent $600 on a flashlight. Didn't the gun itself cost about $600? No, the gun cost like $2,000 something dollars. Hmm, and you put a $600 attachment on it. I tried using it. I went, wow, I, I can't believe I spent $600 on this thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did it give you $600 worth of joy? No. No, I put it back in the box and sent it back to the company and was like, yeah, I need, I need, I need to return this. No you blame you. a moment of self-reflection. Yeah. Those are quite rare. Congratulations. Yes, it was incredibly expensive, <laughs> and uh, I realized the moment I had done that that I was like, yeah, this was this was a mistake. I shouldn't have bought this. What <laughs> captivated you initially? Was it good marketing? Um, no, it's just like one of the coolest looking handguards for the MP5. But it wasn't $600 worth of cool. No, it just, it just wasn't. Yes, I finally have an MP5 SD. SD. Yes! Yes! SD stands for silencer dummy? It stands for... Something in German. Suppressed drumstick. I don't remember what SD really? stands for. I'm sorry. I'm a bad gun nerd. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, and Baby's First Musket also needs to be changed to Baby's First Blunderbuss. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to charge it anymore? Well, no, you still have to charge it, but now it's a shotgun, not a rifle. There oh, you go. It's a blunderbuss, oh, not a musket. Is that the difference? Muskets were rifles and blunderbusses were shotguns? I never knew. Well, no, technically a musket is a musket. A rifle has rifling. That's why it's called a rifling because I, it has because it I, has. I'm saying that's the analogous firearm. A musket is to a rifle as a blunderbuss is to a shotgun. Yeah. Yes. Pretty okay. much. Wow. We were both shoot a Mac 11. Finding all kinds of guns today. Nice. That didn't seem like a Mac 11. Aren't those supposed to be full auto? On the actual military ones, they have a semi and a full auto setting. Right. I guess this is not the military one. There's several different versions. I think the Mac 11 was in full. What the hell? Put a scope on the Mac 11. Uh, what uh, in the absolute I hell? Anything. <laughs> yeah, there you go. This is so stupid. <laughs> uh, what is deliver? Why a Walther PPK? Pretty much. With an extended barrel in 10 millimeter. <laughs> The Walther PPK is in 10 millimeter. It's in <laughs> what? It's just a straight blowback semi-automatic pistol. <clears throat> really low magazine capacity. Looks like it would be. They made the ejection port much bigger on this one, but the original Walther PPK uh, has PB. I absolutely love the old the old Colt uh, Navy issues and Army issues from the 1870s. I absolutely love those. Um. My my grandfather actually had one of the army issue for the army cavalry officers. I like that thing. I don't know what the fuck this thing is. It has a completely fixed barrel, which makes it even simpler. Makes sense. Got a decocker and a safety on it. The trigger pull on them is, if I'm being honest, not great. So do you see the little pin that's like just under the rear sight? Okay. That one is a loaded chamber indicator, so that actually protrudes from the gun just a little tiny bit to let you know there's a round chambered in it. Uh-huh. If I remember correctly, it's the gun that Adolf Hitler shot himself with. Oh, wow. Big loss. Uh, it also was uh, James Bond's firearm. Yep. You think he picked that firearm as a tribute to the person who killed Hitler? No, it was mostly because a lot of the OSS in World War II used Walther PPKs because they were... Small, easily concealable. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a ton of recoil to them. True. And uh, a lot of Germans carried them, so it wasn't too suspicious. Were their Walter PPKs in 10 millimeter as well? No, theirs were probably in 32 or 380. Hmm. And this one is suppressed. Mm -hmm. Ow. What was that?
That was probably a ricochet. It probably jumped up into the air and then bounced back down and hit you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. There's a lot of pistols that are kind of just copies of the Walther PPK. Like, the Makarov pistol is basically just a Soviet copy of the Walther PPK. Which sucks. Like, the safety's even in the same spot, and it uses a fixed barrel. Okay. The recoil of 380 does end up being a little bit more forceful on the PPK, but that's just because the barrel is fixed in one spot. Well, that makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, Walther PPK, it's single and double action. You can run it in either fire mode. Double action has got a very heavy trigger pull. Single action is not bad, but not great. Good gracious. <laughs> oh, it's a very poorly put together AK. <laughs> Hand assembled, I see. Tack, tack, tack. Uh, yep, that looks like an AK-47 to me. What? Oh, God, those welds. So <laughs> the gas block is normally not welded to the barrel like that. It's usually cast out of the same... Well, I don't know. I guess if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Why would you have that spring exposed? Maybe I'm the one who made this weapon. I wouldn't know what I'm doing. There you go. If you made this weapon, I would actually be very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> if I could make anything more than a slingshot. I don't know. It's got a lot of holes in it. Yeah, it looks like an XM8 with a Picatinny rail system on it. Um, it looks like the standard M16, M4 kind of model that most guns these days follow. No, it looks like an XM8. Yeah. I actually do like the scars. I, I like the scar a little bit more than I like this thing. Yeah, it's the similar thing, you know. No, no, it isn't similar. It looks like an XM8. Yeah. Which is different from an M16, M4. And not really. Yes, it is. It's vastly different. I'm, I'm looking at it, and it's like... The, uh, the handguard looks similar. That's only because it has Picatinny rails on it. It doesn't look anything like an M16 M4. <laughs> the magazine and the... <laughs> no, it's hugely different. Look, it's got a tab on it instead of having a button. Okay. It looks like a G36 if it looks it's similar to anything else. Okay, but, I mean, tab versus button. You're getting into the minutia now. Oh, my oh God. God. Yeah, the minutia of the difference between a push-button magazine release and a ambidextrous tab magazine release. You say that sarcastically... <laughs> I suppose this thing looks like an M4 to you as well. M A1. M16 A1. Oh my god, I, I hate you. Because of the triangle <laughs> barrel thing. You know? Because they had the triangle hand guards in the M16 A1. I don't know. I just like that. For some reason, it just. Uh, I, I'm thinking it's just an aesthetic thing. I like the FAMAS. I like the. I like the AUG. I like the SCAR. I just like blocky guns. I don't know I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is. I just like them. I just the aesthetic appeals to me for some reason. Maybe because I'm a brick. Am I thinking of the red gun? It was the M16A1, right? I legitimately can't remember. I thought it was the M16A1. It had the triangle barrel, right? I'm sorry, I'm staring at this vehicle and ignoring you. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just saw the word Ithaca Model 37 and I got interested because it's a pump action shotgun, baby. That also does cryo damage. I'm a big fan of this shotgun. It's a really great pump-action shotgun. Yeah. It's interesting in that it only has one action bar. I, I agree. I know exactly what Actually, you're talking about. Actually, a lot of older shotguns all only had one action bar. I don't remember what the first shotgun to have two action bars was. Two just that kind of adds, it increases reliability, adds the backup in case one of them gets bent or something. Well, the more action bars, the better, I always say. Um, but the Ithaca 37 is actually a completely ambidextrous pump-action shotgun. You feed the shells in through the bottom, and it ejects them through the bottom. Ah. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, did they actually uh. make it so the shotgun shells come out the bottom? Yes, they did! That's so cool! Nice. <laughs> I'm very happy about that! Yes! <laughs> There you go. That is, oh, I love little details like that. that Accolades from Zach. That makes me really happy. There you um, go. So the Ithaca 37, one of the original versions was called the Featherlight because it was an incredibly lightweight pump action shotgun. Mm -hmm. My favorite. I'll tell you the, like, so I went out with a Mossberg and the shotgun is a universal language because you will have people who act like they don't understand hand signals and everything like that. You ratchet a shotgun Everybody understands whatever the fuck you're doing, stop doing it. The version of the Ithaca 37 is the Ithaca 37 Stakeout, which is a pump action with like a 14 inch barrel. It's super cool. It was one of the first pistol grip only shotguns. All right. There's a guy ranting about shotguns out there. Why are you telling me? Well, because he's on his way in here. I think you can weasel some money out of him. <laughs>
Um, we can do the standard stock or with an ammo holder. That's kind of neat. Standard sights. There are iron sights, which is interesting. Why would you do? Oh, you can convert it to slam fire. What does that do? It's like fully automatic for a pump action. Uh -huh. Only you have to manually rack it. So <laughs> every time you go backwards, it ejects the shell. You go forwards, and as soon as the shell is chambered, it fires. Ooh. So basically, you just keep going, clack, rack, 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 <laughs> and it just fires until it's out of ammo. I didn't. Okay, that's nice. Something. Ooh! Oh, looks like he's got new stock after all. Ooh! Oh, baby, where have you been all my life? This is one of my favorite guns. Let's let's inspect it really quick. It's a big list. This is the BNT MP9, which its civilian variant is the TP9. Ah, uh, yes, the Beckler and Tach MP9. No, it's Bruder and Tomet. <laughs> this one, you'll notice that you've got the white dot, the red dot, yes. and then the four red dots. Wait, is that a four-round burst, or is that a full auto? It's full auto. Oh, jeez. Yeah, the, the, the four dots are just full auto. The civilian version only has two settings. The BNT MP9 originally started life as the Steyr TMP, or the Steyr SPP, which is the civilian version. Steyr was originally making these, and then for some reason Steyr decided they didn't want to make them anymore, so they sold the rights to Bruger and Tomet, who is now the exclusive producer of these guns. Bruger and Tomet improved on the gun by changing the safety mechanism from a cross-bolt three-position safety to a rotating selector lever. That's a wise decision, I think. Uh, the cross-bolt safety was a little awkward, it was kind of hard to actuate. Now, with the addition of a rotating safety, it is completely ambidextrous. Mm -hmm. It is a rotating barrel, which is a really cool feature. Uh, another gun that uses a rotating barrel is the Beretta PX4 Storm pistols. Those also use a rotating barrel. You know on a M16, when the bolt goes forward, it goes into battery and then rotates to lock? Yeah. This one, the bolt itself goes forward, and then the barrel rotates instead of the bolt. That's weird. Yeah, it's really strange. It's super cool. When you take the entire barrel mechanism out of this thing, it looks like a lightsaber. <laughs> it's sick. All right. Um, um, it's a polygonally bored barrel, which is really cool. Glocks use polygonal barrels, and so do H&K uh, and pistols. They also use polygonal barrels. Oh. Are the bullets we're firing shaped like hexagons? So normally, really? the rifling on a gun, if you were to magnify it, it's, it's 90 degree cuts. It's a bunch of spirals. Yeah, it's a spiral, but the spiral that's coming out of the barrel is a 90 degree thing. It means that one, the barrel is easier to clean. Two, it means that the bullet meshes with the barrel better so you don't get as many gas leaks where the gas is escaping in between the bullet and the lands and grooves and going out the front of the barrel. The downside to polygonal rifling is it's generally more expensive hey, and a little- ah! Holy shit. That actually kind of scared me. Alexis, you have a nice day, bud. Have a good time to work, bud. Alan, if I could have an alien pulse rifle or Terminator Future War plasma gun, which would I choose? The pulse rifle. The pulse rifle. I gotta say the pulse rifle. Another kind of interesting thing about the uh, you, TMP is that it is made primarily of plastic. I mean, the bolt and barrel mechanism, that's all obviously made of steel. Right. But the entire top cover of this gun is just one piece of plastic. There's not even any, like, aluminum inserts or anything. That makes it very lightweight. Oh, yeah. This is one of those guns that fits into a really weird niche of, like, is it a submachine gun or is it a personal defense weapon? What does it qualify as? It's sometimes difficult to quantify these things. It, it is. It, it can be landmine. It can be a landmine. It could be a landmine. Why didn't I... Why aren't you dead is the better question. He defused that landmine. You did! With your face! Apparently so. Modifying the APC-9 because APCs 1 through 8 were taken. Oh, it's pretty fun. You know... <laughs> When you've got that four grip, and then you got the normal grip, and then you got the magazine sticking out, kind of reminds me of a Nintendo 64 controller. So, I do have a couple problems with this gun, because of course I do. Uh-huh. Pistol <laughs> the 44. This is an older model Smith & Wesson. You can see on the hammer, 
there is a notch in the center of it. Uh-huh. That notch is where the fixed firing pin... Don't do that to a revolver! <laughs> You're the one doing it! <laughs> that notch is where the fixed firing pin would go. Mm -hmm. And you can't... I can't help but notice that there isn't actually a fixed firing pin on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, the locating area... So there's there should be an area on the back of this revolver that locates the fixed firing pin so that it strikes the back of the primer in exactly the center. That is completely... Exactly, slacker. The the standard standard M thirty five Galaxy Laz gun is the best gun, flat out mass produced. From you, you could put that thing in pretty much any Galaxy, and it would immediately take over. Really missing. It's a custom <laughs> modified version, I guess. It's not even a custom modified version. Kellogg modified it in a bad, bad way. Yes. Ooh. Hello, hello, hello. Yup. Why is it making things on fire? Hey, you got a hardened P90 that ignites things. It sets things on fire for some reason. I don't know why. P90 looks like shit. <laughs> I've been waiting for so long to get a P90. It looks like crap. What? What is this? <laughs> You've been waiting for... You, you keep on saying, I hope I find a P90 today. Every time we start, I hope we find a P90. Uh, yeah. DJ and then I get one and it looks so like crap. Oh, real gun. Real gun. What, what makes it look bad? Is it the paint job, maybe? I, I hope it's just the paint job, because this this looks kind of like ass. <laughs> hey, it's got five notches. That must mean somebody got five kills. Why uh. is it welded? <laughs> why, is it, why is this part welded together like it's made out of sheet metal? Oh, wait, no, isn't the P90 supposed to be plastic? Yes, it's plastic. Why, also, it's in 45 auto, which... You know what? You had to put it in a caliber actually in the game so i'm gonna let it slide the caliber it's in isn't there a nine millimeter in the game though it's not in nine millimeter though no all right all right Wait, i need, I need to go then? i need to go back to the house i need to go back to the house okay, okay. i need to i need to have my materials <laughs> you hate how it's welded even though it's supposed to be made of plastic. yeah it's not supposed to be what what if i do the factory receiver then is it not welded there we go that is the correct Better. receiver <laughs> the, apparently the the hardened receiver i appreciate the idea <laughs> uh large magazine what is how do you extend a magazine on that on that thing? You don't. The Hell only gun. way you extend a magazine, there's no room to put more bullets in between those two parts. Yeah, exactly. Well, there is if you buy a magazine that is restricted to ten rounds because it has a plastic spacer in it, so that you can only put ten rounds in it. That's the only way you can extend a magazine is oh. by removing that spacer. Oh, okay. The extended is a superior seventy-five round magazine, which is is no. <laughs> it's no. It's no. It's no. It's, it's no. Why does it have H and K MP7 sights? Because people like H and K MP7 sights. I guess the MP7 sights are interesting because they're flip-up rifle sights that have pistol sights built in. So when they're folded down, it's pistol sights. When they fold up, it's rifle sights. That is such that a good looking gun. That is interesting. Yeah, I might just do the reflex sight because that kind of would make the most sense. I think for a personal defense weapon. Inspector, standard sights. Yeah, we'll just do the reflex sight. Oh, okay. You got that a works. suppressor. A lot Let's... of suppressor. What, <laughs> what in the, the absolute shit is that? The mall ninja suppressor. I know this. This is from an airsoft P90. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's one from like an airsoft P90. That is silly. It's funny they call it the mall ninja suppressor. <laughs> Green tip penetrator. Well, no. Green tip does penetrate. Yes. When people in the United States usually think of green tip ammo, they're thinking of 5.56 by 45 millimeter. Right. Green tip. That's what I'm the, thinking of. Which is the standard U.S. military one. And it is a steel cord ammo, but it's really more of a barrier penetrating ammo, not an armor penetrating ammo. Black is traditionally armor penetrating ammo. Okay. Um, green is just like standard ammo. The P90 armor piercing ammo would still be a black tip, so that is technically incorrect. <laughs> oh, you can change the ammo. It's not 45 anymore. <laughs> you can make Ew. it institute. Oh, oh. I love it. <laughs> oh, it looks like it's meant to be in, in CSGO. <laughs> Ugh. The civilian version of this gun is the FN PS90. Right, which is what you have. Which is what I own. It's the semi-auto only version of the P90. Traditionally, it comes with a 16-inch barrel mm. that a lot of people will buy and they'll put the dummy suppressor over it or basically like a shroud like this okay i got mine registered as a short barrel rifle and then put the shorter barrel on it uh-huh looking a little better than how you first found it 
I kind of don't. Oh yeah, cause like now, look when I when I pull the magazine out of this, you can actually see the bolt in there. You can see the little nice. lugs that the magazine seats itself on. This is a much better looking stock. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it's it's looking pretty good. I, the magazine isn't clear, which is one of the things that I really like about the P90. Is it's usually like a smoked polymer, so you can, at a glance, because you aim it like this, mm -hmm. at a glance you can see exactly how much ammo you have left. Nice. One of the big cool guy things about the P90 is ammo is stored in the magazine horizontally. When it gets to the back of the magazine, it rotates the ammo 90 degrees and drops down, and then loads around into the chamber. The shell casings come out of that hole right there. That is what makes it ambidextrous. Yep. The selector switch, located underneath the trigger, is accessible from either side. There is a charging handle on, again, either side of the gun. I guess that's what makes it ambidextrous. This one is the Tri-Rail P90, which the standard P90 actually has backup iron sights built into the top of the receiver, which... I can't show you on this one, mm. but it has backup iron sights on both this side and what- <coughs> Captain Commander, you heard TF2 is removing hats. That's not gonna happen. It would be the other side of the gun. So again, ambidextrous. It was designed to basically be a personal defense weapon. A, a lot of super sneaky people started using it because it's, it's incredibly compact. This is like one of the smallest submachine guns you can get. It has a very high round count, low recoil. It's it's really it's really good. Okay. Oh. I know that they didn't make it in five seven by twenty eight because that would involve making a whole new ammo for the game. Hmm. But why does ten millimeter do less damage than forty five ACP? Because forty five is a bigger bullet. I don't even have the time to go into why that is wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a P ninety now, so that's awesome. Hey, where's that mall ninja? Silencer. I'm not putting them all in just press <laughs> Come on. Think it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> all right, fine. Despite the fact that I absolutely love it and it is one of my favorite guns of all uh, time, I have no more 5.7 ammo for it. That's okay. sad. Just like in real life. <laughs> Ammo's expensive. Just like in real. Man, ammo is like seriously a dollar a bullet for P90. It's They've made ammo ridiculous. so it's just, fucking it's so expensive. It's disappointing because it's just one of. It's, it looks so cool. It's such a cool gun. I love you, P90. I love you. I love you, P90. <laughs> One of the other interesting <laughs> things about the P90 is that um, the, the bullets are like, they're 5.7 they're by 28 is the cartridge. And b most magazines are curved because most bullets are not actually a completely straight. The oh my god, there's a death claw in pit. There's a death claw. <laughs> most bullets. 5.56, <laughs> even 9 mil, when you think it's like they're parallel sides, they're actually tapered. And the reason for that is because it aids in extraction. Ah, uh, makes sense. It's a free country. Anyway, <laughs> you have a round that's completely straight. When you go to extract it, you have two surfaces that are completely parallel. That It's trying to drag that shell casing out of that surface. I see. When you have it, even if it's a very slight taper... It's basically a cone now, and a cone is much easier to pull out of another cone than than a cylinder. Makes a lot of sense. The 5.7 by He really is, Reyna. He really is. It's actually cone shaped. Yeah, Matthew, I just started the stream like almost two hours ago. So what they do to make it sometimes. work is the shell casing is. Now, actually, Matthew, I put this I put this up last night before I went to sleep. That's when I scheduled this last night before I went to sleep. YouTube, it doesn't alert anybody. It's coated in like a polymer huh. to help it extract from the chamber better. Okay. Which does mean that now the, your rounds are more expensive to make because you have to coat them in a polymer. Seems like it would just make more sense to go for the cheaper tapered off bullets. It's really interesting. Just the fact that it's a bottleneck pistol cartridge is super interesting to me. But then I guess you could also argue that 357 SIG and 762 Tokarev, those are also bottleneck pistol cartridges. I guess you could argue that because they are. What do you think about this Halo gun here? It's a Halo sniper rifle. The one that was in the original Halo is like slightly based on the Donnell NTW-20, which is a bullpup. Is it the Donnell NTW-20? 
It might be. I can't remember. You, you could keep on speaking confidently, and I'd have believed you. <laughs> it's like a 20 millimeter sniper rifle. It's like a South African gun, and that's what the sniper rifle from Halo is based on. All right. Oh, it's the gun from Halo. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Cool, Halo gun. Ooh. That's pretty loud. cool. I'm not a huge Halo fan, so no? it just it just kind of looks like a gun to me. Well, yeah. it's supposed to be some kind of bullpup design. I don't really understand why it's got that cowling on the top of it. Also, I feel like the stock is not long enough. Uh, I feel like the front is too long and the stock isn't long enough. Right. Mm. I don't like how they gently push the charging handle forward when you reload it. Also, where's the sights? How am I supposed to aim? To just aim down the top of the cow link. Yeah. I also find it funny that they gave it 60 rounds, just like the one in Halo. Nice. But there's no way that magazine could hold 60 rounds. <laughs> uh, the M6 Oni PWDS. Oh, this is the pistol from Halo. Cool. That. Woo! Good God. Yeah. Oh, this one uses... Okay, the Magnum from the original Halo is the most powerful weapon known to exist. Change my mind. 50? <laughs> you were firing 50 caliber this bullets. This pistol shoots 50 MG. Does it now? My ass it does. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've already used it once, but uh, maybe not. I haven't used this one, I don't think. The 392A1. Ew, those bipod legs do not belong on there. Ew. No? Ew. Why do they put FNFAL bipod legs on the... All right, whatever. whatever. Bipods are handy, that's why. No. I, I like how it's a Halo gun, but with real-world compensators. We'll do the MB40 muzzle break. <laughs> okay. Uh, leg no legendary effect. Bipod removed. We don't want a bipod on it. Uh, oh, my God. It's got a PEC-15 for some reason. No flashlight. <laughs> Here we'll do the we'll do the heavy barrel then. Okay. Yeah, do that. Because then then the gas tube is actually connected to something. <laughs> we've got for some reason a Trigicon SRS as an option, yeah. Yeah. We've got the Elkin M145. We got the MCS2. We've got the I don't I think that might be an actual Halo optic. I'm not positive. I don't know. Ammo type. Uh, currently it's 762 by 51 NATO. Full metal jacket. Armor piercing or Full metal jacket or 5.56 or 5 millimeter. Oh, that apparently. So it's still 7.62. Wait, no, that's. Is it, why does it convert it to 8 mil Mauser? Wait, what? I, why does it convert it to 7.92 by 57 8 millimeter Mauser? I thought that maybe it'd been a typo because I've never heard of a 7.92. Wait, 7 what? 7.92 is 8 mil Mauser. Okay. I. Okay, whatever. Holy crap, it's a Sig P220. <laughs> oh my god. You like them? That's pretty cool. And it's a 45 caliber semi automatic pistol with a decocker on it. Is this one a West German. Uh, maybe? Okay. Yeah, it's what most of their other handguns are based on, is the, the 220 series. Uh, nice. Single stack, 45 ACP. They did make versions in 9mm. Actually, fun fact, the first screen appearance of the SIG P220 series handgun was in the movie Rambo 2, and it was held by one of the CIA agents, which you can tell in that movie that it's an actual 220 and not a blank firing version by the shape of the top of the barrel. Okay. Well, I, can't, I can't figure out any of that. Well, I could. And based on when the movie Rambo 2 was filmed, that means that that was an actual P220 that was issued to the U.S. Army to use in trials to replace the 1911. But it never did okay. replace that gun. No, it didn't. The one that actually ended up winning the U.S. Army pistol trials was the Beretta 92FS. But anyway, we're getting off on a whole different tangent here. I personally love the SIG 226. I actually own one. It is a 226 Mark 25, which is the Naval Special Warfare variant. Hmm. Another fun fact about this handgun, does not have a safety on it. No. Nope. Just take the bullets out, stupid. No, it has internal drop safeties. It has many things to prevent it from firing. Uh, there's a firing pin locking block. There's the fact that the hammer will not go all the way forward unless the trigger has been pulled on it. There's a the thing to prevent it from going off unless the slide is fully in battery. Um, what this gun ha does have is it has a decocker, which puts it in double action mode, which has a relatively long and heavy trigger pull. <laughs> decocker. The logic on it is <laughs> manually activated thumb safety, so you don't have to disengage anything when you draw the pistol out of the holster. 
You don't have to disengage anything. Your first trigger pull is just going to be a relatively long, heavy trigger pull. And the only way for the gun to actually go off is if you intentionally pull the trigger on the gun. Mm-hmm. Actually, kind of... How does he... Oh, never mind. Uh, kind of excited about finding this handgun. Oh, my God. Look at this. Look at this abomination. What in the hell is that? <laughs> That's fucking cringe, bro. <laughs> How are you supposed to use the tiny bayonet? <laughs> you got the silencer! So you can't even use the bayonet! <laughs> Bruh! Bruh! This is so unrelentingly cringe. Oh my god, they put a pear slicer. You just posted cringe, bro. <laughs> It's not even a shiv, dude. That blade's the size of the... That blade's about that long, dude. That blade's about that... Hold on, hold on. Let me look at that again. Yeah, that blade is about that long. That's... It, it, th that, that is basically an orange peeler, my guy. That is an orange peeler. It's not even a knife. That is so ridiculous. You have to swing the gun to cut it? Dude, there's no way to even do it. That gun is an abomination unto God and man. There's no... There, there's no fixing that. There's no fixing that at all. Just put it underneath a steamroll and roll over it. There's nothing left for it. I knew he was going to freak out when he saw the, the assault rifle. Because the assault rifle is the most disgusting thing I've ever witnessed. Before, flat out. It's a pairing knife for descaling fish? Dude, that's not even for descaling fish. You can't even do that with it. You can't fillet. You can't do anything. I don't know what you'd use that for. Because the handle's that long. The entire blade's probably about... The entire thing from start to finish is about that long. Maybe a little bit longer. Probably about a th four and a half inches. That's absolutely painful. You can use it to pierce and eat olives. Dude, it doesn't even do that correctly. That That is an orange peeler, okay? You burned that gun when you found it, Matthew. I don't blame you. That thing is so bad. That thing is so bad. Asher, don't even get me started. That gun was so horrible. The first time I picked it up, I was like, what in the hell am I looking at? But the bad thing about it is, um, it's hard to design another gun that's stronger than it. So you wind up lugging that massive piece of crap around. Thank you, Alan. There are mods to fix the assault rifle. I, I, I just generally don't play with mods most of the time. I just don't play with mods. I need to. I don't. I need to find a time to play, but I don't. I might have some time in the next... I, I've got the next five days off. I might as well play some Mechanicus and finish that game out. That I might, that ought to be fun. Um, and figure out something to do. My wife is getting on me because I've stopped playing games again. I've stopped playing games completely. Um, so she's been getting on she's been getting on me about, you know, taking some time for myself, things like that. So pretty soon I'm gonna have to figure out something. Or else she's gonna hit me with something heavy. I'm just saying. She's probably gonna hit me with something heavy sooner than later. But when he went off on that that assault rifle, I'm telling you. I've loved the scar since the first time I saw it. The AUG, um I like that one as well. I like the FAMAS. They just look good to me. I like, for some reason, I just like that kind of appearance. So, if you're wondering why I have those preferences, I do. For the handgun, though, handgun for me is 1911, 100%. I really can't get past that. I just can't. That water cooler would never been used in Fallout, as water is the goal of the Fallout world. Every cap is worth one bottle of water. Like the prosthetic foot? <laughs> You turn Fallout 4 into a zombie game? There you go, Buck. Fallout 4 London has kind of come out soon in April from what I'm hearing. 
So, um, remember Big, remember Bear and Big Blue House? You mean the, you mean the one, the Ranger Stand? A PSA Jackal? No, no. I will, Raina. I will. Um, I have it, Matthew. I just haven't booted it up. There's a lot of games that I have that I haven't booted up. Um, but for the most part, um, let's see. I want to finish a game before I start on another one. So, I had to give up playing Baldur's Gate 3 because I, I went to Baldur's Gate in the lower city and my computer just decided it was going to die. Um, it doesn't want to go. You want to play the pot? You want to play the pot project London, but you're not sure your PC can handle it. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> oh, Dylan, Dylan. So, um, the whole thing. Well, let me explain that. Uh, where the Tau hatred comes from, the the where that all that actually comes from. Um. So, there was this little, it, if you're near, if if you live near San Diego, um, you know that you're going to know the store that I'm talking about. It was this little store right next to the trolley stop uh, near Point Loma. Uh, you, actually, not that far, like, it was the whole trolley station and uh, the, the station up there. Um, and... That was where the game store was that I first really started getting into 40k at, where I first started buying miniatures. I bought my first Adeptus Serenius Army. Everybody had somebody they hated. Everybody had somebody they hated. Um, and my whole thing was Paint the Night as a Pug Night? Yes. Um, my whole thing for... Because um, originally, I think that I was going to be a Chaos hater. Because everybody had, like, you were supposed to be um, the King High Hater, the Hater's Ball. Okay? King High Hater, the Hater's Ball. You're supposed to be that person towards that faction. And it was always funny because there was this one woman that played, um, the, the best one, she would just roast the crap out of this guy that played orcs. And there was this one guy, like uh, uh, he was this really huge guy. He played orcs and he'd wear green body paint all the time. Um, I don't think it was Paradise uh, Shadowed. It's gone now. It's fucking gone. Okay, it's fucking gone. I can't believe it. But um, we had this one guy come in, right? We had this one guy come in, and I was told never play with this guy because he will target he will target newer players and wait for you to put out all your pieces and then break out a perfect counter to what you just put down. So, you know, um, I had pretty much all infantry. I didn't have any penitent engines, nothing like that with the sisters. I didn't have anything like that. He was pretty much an orc in real life. He was so fucking funny, but he told me, do not play this dude when he comes in because what he's going to do is he's going to wait till you put everything down. He's going to put your exact counter on there and then he's going to talk shit the whole fucking time. He was that guy. He was that guy. He would bring a thousand five hundred point army to the to to the store with him, and then he'd pick on people. He 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 um talk shit to people to get them to play with him, and they would have maybe uh maybe a three hundred four hundred point army max, and he would just sit there with like he did it with a towel. He did it with Space Marines. He did it with one other group, but he did it with a towel. And um, he didn't know how to play. He just didn't know how to play at all. But what he would do is, if you brought in, like, if you brought in a regiment of Imperial Guard with LAS guns, he would deploy hammerheads. If you didn't have, if you didn't have heavy weapons teams, he would deploy armor and everything else like that. He would do that constantly. All right, guys, if you guys are taking off, you guys have a wonderful night. So I was initially going to be chaos. I, I was initially going to be, you know, hating chaos because I was playing the end of the Soritas. I really liked the nuns with guns. I thought they were fucking awesome. And so, um, 
I switched to Hayden Tao because of this guy. And he would, um, he never got kicked out of the store no matter how many times people complained about him. Because he would sit there and he'd find the people that had like the 200 point army. You know, they just have a couple of squads of Imperial Guardsmen and he's rolling out fucking crisis suits against them. What the fuck are you going to do? You're not going to do anything. You're going to die. You're going to, you, and the thing about it would be, he talks shit the entire time. He would just pick your perfect counter. That's what he would do. Um, and I watched him do this to several people. So I started hating on the towel. Um, pretty much. He was a fucking asshole. He was a fucking asshole. Um, so basically I eventually played him and beat him because the guy that played the orcs and really, he was a, he was a competitive player. He just played orcs for fun. He came to play at our place for fun. If he was serious, he'd break out his gray knights and he just fucking stomp you. So, um, at one point, um, he just, yeah, he was that kind of guy that killed the scene. So at one point, um, Tad the Tau, we'll just call him Tad the Tau, um, the guy that, the guy that played Orcs told me, um, go ahead and play against him. And I finally said, fine. I, I said, okay, dude, but he's going to, as soon as I put out, as soon as I put out my sister's. He's going to break out some bullshit. He said, no, don't worry about that shit. Don't worry, because I have a fully painted sister's army. I can't remember where he got the sister's army right now off the top of my head, because I haven't been sitting here reminiscing about the good old days back in the day. But um, he had a fully loaded sister's army. He, he had like 3,000 points of sisters. He had 3,000 points of sisters. And he breaks out. He, he already, this guy, you know, this Tau player knew what I fucking had. So he sets out, and I had a 500 point army. He sets out his army, and he's like, when are you going to break out your stuff? Starts talking all this shit. Dude walks in with two fucking briefcases, sets them down on the table, pops them open. He's like, no, I'm not playing you. He's like, no, he's playing you. He starts breaking out penitent engines. He starts breaking out heavy weapons teams. He starts breaking out the perfect counter to this guy. <laughs> And he didn't come back to that fucking shop for a month. So, the towel thing is not as serious as people actually think it is. The towel thing is because any time that you played against... So, if if you were at my game shop in the early 2000s, you were going to be encouraged... You, you know, you were going to have your faction, right? But you were going to be encouraged to pick one, one other faction that you were just going to have a roast session with every time you played them. You were just going to have a roast section every time you played them. Like the orc guy, his thing was he didn't like he he would talk shit about the Eldar like nonstop. Him and that chick that played Eldar were legitimately the funniest fucking things you could ever. Nobody else would be playing. They'd have a five that they 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 would sit there and roll out an entire fucking army and they'd be talking shit to each other the entire time, the entire time, and it would make me cry laughing sitting there, and they're just hating on each other like nobody's business. The guy, there was another guy who played uh, Emperor's Children, and his whole thing was anytime he went to play against somebody from Nurgle, he would be constantly yelling at the other person that they stunk. All this, so you just had that one guy in the game store that as soon as they showed up, you just started throwing shade at their ass because it was just fun like that. So that's where the Tau hatred actually comes from. It does come from that guy. But it comes from that guy because he was my first real experience with that guy. Um, and plus, I'm really good at talking shit. And people really like that. So, yeah. You just think the Blue Boys are cool because of mechs and range units? Dude, it's speaking completely honestly... Um, the Tau present a whole different way of playing. The, 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 the great thing about the Tau, as far as from a gameplay perspective, is just like the Eldar, just like the Necron, just like every other style, like they, they have, they were a good fit in, and the Crute and Vespin options did give them a lot of leeway. But I haven't played the game in 10 years. I can't. Um... I can't play. I can't paint models. I just can't paint models, and that sucks. Um, I can't even hold the paintbrush for more than five minutes. 
it is what it is. But yeah, I played at that I played at that game store for a year and a half. I eventually built up to a thousand point Sororitas army. And the entire time I was hating on the towel. And um so anytime the funniest thing was the uh the funniest thing was because people started saying anime like you started doing anime was towel. I started like every time I'd walk in the door, the 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 uh, guy that ran the place thought I was thought it was funny as shit, because I would sit there and yell at him for being a towel propagandist. Um, it was just a thing. Uh, towel would be interesting to face some of the battle battle tech. No, towel battle suits would blitzkrieg and destroy battle tech suits. It wouldn't even be a competition, except for the urban mech, because the urban mech would one tap a fucking crisis suit. Okay, and they're not a crisis suit. What am I talking about? It would one tap. It would one tap one of the um, uh, Riptide. It would just be done. Because uh, Tau suits aren't really that big, to be honest with you. They're not large. Um, they just look like they should be. They look like fucking Gundam suits. In any case, Warpugs. I hope if you were having a bad day, you're having a better one. I hope if you had a good day, it turned into a great one. And thank you for spending time with me. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna head out from here. I'm going to head out from here. I'm going to go outside and I'm going to pet that pug. Yeah, Irby's be stumped. Irby, that was the funniest thing about playing Mech Warrior Online is if you found somebody, because people would rush straight to the assault mechs and then they completely forget about the Irby that can one-tap your leg off just just for no good goddamn reason. They just decided to put an AC-20 on there. That's the only thing they got. They got five rounds of ammo, but they're going to get at least five kills. War pugs, I'm gonna take off. I hope you guys had a great night, and I'll catch you guys next time, okay? Fucking towel!